L'chaim, l'chaim, l'chaim. L'shona toiva, belimud achsidus, or bedak achsidus. Reb Yitzchak Isaac Epstein, Reb Isaac Humler, was one of the prized Talmidim of the Alter Rebbe. Reb Isaac Humler came from an illustrious family, the Epstein family. He was actually a great uncle of the Aruch HaShulchan. He was a tall man, impressive person, a feitoyer. He was very particular in how he would dress. He was 50 years, he was the Rav of the Chassidosh city of Homel. He was a Chassid of the Alter Rebbe, the Mittler Rebbe, and the Tzemach Tzedek. Reb Isaac Homler, when he once came to visit the Alter Rebbe, and he made L'chaim, and he sat with his friend, Reb Zalma Zezmer, and Reb Pesach Malastovker, and he said, L'chaim, L'chaim, he said, Shloim HaMelech was Chochem Mikol Odom, but he wasn't a Chassid. Shloim HaMelech tries to describe the love of Yidin and the Reboi Shiloilam. So what does he do in Shir Hashidim? He describes it in the best possible way. The love of a man to a woman. He said had he been a Chosid, he would describe the whole Shir Hashidim with a Chosid and a Rebbe. When I was young, the Alter Rebbe came at night in the Beis Medrash and we were sleeping in the Beis Medrash. And the Shamish was walking with a lantern, and he looked at everyone's face. If you looked at the Alter Rebbe, you could see that he loved us as Chassidim more than a mother loves her young child. Rebbe Isaac was a Gon Otsum. He wrote his father, a Sefer Chon Ariel in Chassidus. And Rebbe Isaac was a Chassid. His Estalkus, the story of his Estalkus, and tonight we're doing the Siyum also, besides the Tanya and the Siyum, Hashas, we happen to do the Siyum at Rambam, going from Sefer Noshim to Kedusha. Sashgoch al there's a story that Abba Isaac all night was learning with his Talmidim. And uh, it was in the morning, he knew it'll be his Istalkus. A woman came in with a Pesashayla, chicken, and uh, one of the Talmidim, is Haltach Ban Yitzhiya Saneshama, so he said, Yidin, let's walk in the other room. But Abba Isaac saw with his eyes what the Shaila is. Stach mefurish in Rambam in Kedusha. And when he said those words, his neshama was oilu l'mayla. So we're actually being Messiah tonight in the Rambam, those that are learning three parokim, going from Noshim to Kedusha, which has to do with, uh, with the night's event, Pod B'Sholem, because we finish off the Sefer, V'yadata ki Sholem O'Alecha V'kadata Novach V'lois Echta. Rabbi Isaac, when he became a chosid, his father was very upset. The family, the Rebbe told the story at a Yud Kislev Abrengen, the family sat shiva kenohug. They sat shiva. They lost the child. He became a chosid. But when he came back home, he came back home, it was before Pesach. From when he was a tender young child, he had a custom. Every year he learned the entire shas, and he would be Messiah at Erev Pesach because he was a b'chor, he would make a siyum. Not a bad minig. He would be metzayim the entire shas. He came home and he did it as usual. He was metzayim shas. His father said, wow. All this lush and hardest I heard. And this, my kid had a chance to learn the entire shas. Being by the Alter Rebbe couldn't be that bad. So he made shalom with his son. I always thought, what was the connection of the Siyam shas and Yutas Kedem? We're celebrating tonight for Beis Menachem Mendel. We completed 10 years of Chalukas Asiyah Mashas. What's the connection between Chalukas Ashas and Yutas Kislev? The truth is that because the Alter Rebbe says to do so, the Alter Rebbe says in the, in the end of Tanya, we're being the same Tanya now, Ligmer Kola Shas Bachol Shas. 
Vashona Bachal Ir Vir Lakala Kamasechtas Apigoidal Oi Bedotzen, Vir Shiesba Minyonim Haraba, Yigmur Hol Minyon Minyon, Vim Eze Minyon Cotton Mahachal, Yetzar Fale Manoshim Eze Minyon Godel. Beval Yeshuna, Choik Veloyaver. The Alter Rebbe says it's a takona for his Chasidim. That every minion of Chasidim should get together and make a Chalukas Ashas. And it's interesting because the first letter in Igeres Sakoidish, the Alter Rebbe says, Shmua Toi Veshama. Uh, so the Alter Rebbe actually wrote a letter the following year thanking the Hasidim for following this Takona. But still, what's the connection to Yutas Kislev? I always thought, because the Masnagdim was saying that now the Hasidim are, learn, are decreasing in their learning of Talmud. And Al-Tarebbe said, it's not true. On the contrary, when a person learns Chassidus and he sees the beauty and the preciousness of learning Torah, he increases his learning Torah. But that's not Mematzah, it doesn't give out the whole depth of the Takona. There's a beautiful Kuntris that uh, the Rebbe, that came out from the Rebbe, called Kuntris Chalukesh Hashas Beyutas Kislev. And uh, the Rebbe gave out this kuntas and tovshin numbeis. The Rebbe explains that there is an inner connection between the chalukas ashas and also the, the tanya and yutas kislev. The Zoya says that the Torah has a gufa deiraisa and the shmosa deiraisa, the body of the Torah and the soul of the Torah. So they have to be connected. A body can't be without a soul and a soul can't be without a body. So when a person learns Hasidus with the Nigla, they add to each other. How? My Zayda, I was just looking, I was just doing it with a daughter. We're doing a report for school. So I, I looked and I have a book where I, the stories that I heard over the years from my grandfather, I went through and it was actually a graduation of one of our daughters and we went to Fabreng. And he told, uh, he told a story, fascinating story. He was a child, his parents lived in Petersburg. So they sent him a Neville. It was Achsidus Shishtot. He was a little boy, nine years old, living like from here to California. But there was just no text messaging and no phone calls. He came home once in six months. He slept in the Malamed had a one a one room house in Neville. And uh, when the kids finished learning and they left, they took the two benches, put it together, put a sheet in it. That was his bed. Kum Pesach is going home, and he was a wild kid. And uh, he's uh, running around an 18-hour trip, an 18-hour trip from Neville to uh, what is a kid nine years old supposed to do? So he's running, there's the butkis, you know, people that play for first class. So he's playing with the doors. Which door is going to open up? One door swings open. Zaid with a long, impressive white beard. So my Zayda was a child. He runs out. The Yid chaps him. He says, Ingele, where bist du? Where are you coming from? Ah, the letters by Malamed and Neville. Tell me, tell me something from your Malamed. So the kid says, I have a story, beautiful story from my Malamed. There was once a Yid, it was a Lamden Otsum. The a Yid, a, a Gvir came to the Rosh Hashiva. I says, I want a son in law, I will support him the rest of his life. So this, this uh, Talmud Chochem got married to this uh, girl. He's sitting and learning. His father in law is taking care of him. Tragedy strikes the family. He becomes a chosid of the Alter Rebbe. Father-in-law is really upset. He goes to Liozna to check up what's going on. And he meets his son-in-law. He, see, uh, he sees the chafrum yid, the daven, the lerent. He meets the, uh, he has this chus to have an audience with the Alter Rebbe. So he, he tells the Alter Rebbe, you know, it's not that bad. My son-in-law is a frum yid. But I must say that it, when he was a Masnagid, he was learning day and night. Now I see him here with Chsidim, he takes Lachayim, Afabrenk Metachevra. It's not the same. The Alter Rebbe said, Let me tell you something. Your son in law, when he was sitting in your house, at the Abyssal for the Katz, Abyssal for the Hund, Abyssal for the Schwer, and Abyssal for the Schwiger. Your son in law learned a little for the cat, a little for the dog. A little for his father-in-law, a little for his mother-in-law. The Alter Rebbe explained, he would sit and learn, but the Gesetz and the He opened up a book, 
He didn't know about it. But he opened up a book, a secular book. He heard a little bit of walking next to the door. So he quickly opened up the Gemara. So, the Gemara, oh, Merabah, yeah. Turns out it was the cat. Ah, shine. He opens up this, this, this Goyesha book again. Then he hears another, another rustle. Oh, Zog, to give more, Zog, the toys <laughs> It was the dog. Next time he hears a rustle, again he opens, he's not taking a chance. This time it was a jackpot. It was Takia, the Schwer. And the Schwer, Geitois from Nachas, and oh, he can't even look at the Schwer. He has no time, he's sitting and learning. The Schwer leaves, and, and, uh, and again he hears a rustle. And the Gweiter, he, 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 he learned the Gemara with the Chayas. Now it was Mamish Gewalt, it was the Schwiger herself. The Schwiger comes in and he's talking, sitting and learning. It was a Geitois from Nachas, a Quilt from Nachas. So, the Alter Rebbe, so basically he learned a little for the cat, a little for the dog, a little for the Schwer, and a little for the Schwiger. Now that he's here in Liozna, he learns for the Rebbeinu Shalom. If he sees you, or if he sees someone looking at him, he closes the Gemara. He doesn't want to learn in order to get honor or recognition. He wants to learn from the Rebbeinu Shlalem. He wants to learn to become one with the Noisen HaToyra. He wants to learn out of expression of Ava Hashem to be Nisatz and Bekdusha HaToyra. So therefore you don't see when he learns. Good, that was the story. And uh, a few days later, Mazeda said he was uh, in, in, in the dining room playing with his little brother, my great uncle, Reb Sholem Arozov, he was in the little Vegelish, swinging him around, and he sees that Sekumta Choshev Eyid, Reb Sholem Ber Zislin, and he's talking with his father, Meltazay, the Reb Chonyim Arozov, and they're both smiling, and Meltazay is standing with his hands behind his back by the wall, and he's shaking his head from side to side, and they're talking about Mendel. So when this Choshev Eyid leaves, so Maizeda goes to his father and asks, what, what's going on? So he says, Mendel, let me tell you what's happening. The Elter Echsidim, when they come to the Rebbe, the Rebbe Rayatz, they go to, the, there's a special thing, the Elter Echsidim, they go to be Makabu Ponim, the, the, the wife of the Rebbe Rashab, the Rebbe Tzim. So, you were in the train, you told a story, and I forgot the name, it was, it was uh, one of the Choshev Echsidim. And when he came, he, was re, he, came to, and he came to visit the Rebbe Tzim Ifke, and he told her the story. Every, every one of the Elter Echsidim that coming afterwards to visit her, she's telling him this story from the Alter Rebbe, and she's saying it, B'Shem Mendel Marozov, <laughs> a boy who's died years old. <laughs> so Maizeda would say, he, doesn't, he, he understood that what was the Pshat was like this, talking in communist Russia already. There's no Chadorim, there's no Yeshivas. There used to be Fruma Yidin, there were Chsidim, there were Misnagdim, there were all kinds of Yidin, and Russia's a big country. Rav Minyan or Binyan of Yidin lived there. Ois, ois chadorim, ois yeshivas, it was nothing, nothing. Everyone is turning into atheists, the kids are going to shkolas. And here is a lebedik a yid, a kid, nine years old. And he's telling a story from the al Rebbe that you shouldn't learn for the cat and for the dog and for the shven and for the shvige. So the Rebbe Tzernifke was really excited about this. That's the connection of learning the shas and yutas kislev. That it could, a person could learn the gufa de Torah and forget about the nishmosa de Torah. So the Alter Rebbe wants that the learning of the gufa de Torah and the nishmosa de Torah should be connected. That we should learn the nigla with the Hasidus. Like the Gemara says that Abba ben Yaman said in the beginning of Baruch hey, tfilosi smuche lemitosi. He would wake up in the morning and daven and then learn. So his learning should be with Yiddish Shemayim. So therefore, the Chalukah Sashas is Dafka and Yutas Kislev, that we should learn, for, and, and the learning should be filled with Yiddish Shemayim and Avas Hashem, learning Torah Lishma. There is a fascinating line in this letter, and it will soon be relevant to all of Bava Chesedim. The Alter Rebbe writes, the kol echad ve'echa ma'loim dim hanal in the Chalukas Hashas yigmer la'atzmoi b'chol shavua hatam ne apa shebatehilim ku few tests that all those that are taking part in this Chalukas Hashas should say every week the capital ku few tests in tehilim. We don't see people doing it today. Those that are saying the capital based on the years of the Rebbe and the Rebbetzin. This year, Chav Bishvat will start saying, Kapitel Kufi and Tess and Tehillim. 
We're going to have to ask the Rebbe Shalom to do us a favor and add another 15 minutes to the 24 hours in the day. <laughs> and then, then it will be Yud Aleph Nissen, it will be Kuf Yud Ches, and then it will be Kuf Yud Tes. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to work. Maybe we should have it like, the, like, uh, like here in the Tehillim. Maybe we should make it in the Minyonim, that people have to go out to work. They should make it, that they should be, just like the Tam Ne'ape that the Altar ever suggested. We should do it in the week. You should do uh, Aleph Beis Gimel Sunday, Dalad Hey Vav Monday, Akapon. And we'll get there, Mashiach Tzakeinu Vetkumen, and we'll ask by Mashiach Tzakeinu himself. But until then, the Shaila Frekzach, what's the connection between reading Kuf Yutes and Tehillim weekly and the Limud Ashas? So the Rebbe says that the beard is simple, and it's a beard nifla. The Sefer Yitzira says, Havem bechokhma vechakim bebina. In other words, there's chokhma and bina, but a person has to bring a little bit of bina into chokhma and a little bit of chokhma into bina. There is shema b'ni musa revicha v'al tita shtoira simecha. There is avicha, musa revicha is toira shebeksav, av is the seed, which is chokhma. This toira simecha, which is the aim, the mother is what develops the seed after nine months as a full baby, which is toira shebalpeh. With, if you read in Torah Shabbat you don't know how to do a mitzvah. It says like Toytofas, like the Alter Rebbe, what the Toytofas, where Toytofas, how do you put the Toytofas? The Torah Shabbat explains. So the Torah Shabbat is the Nakud of Chochmah, Torah Shabbat is the Bina. In Torah Shabbat the main thing is the Oisius, the Kedushas Oisius. You see that this is Torah Hashem Tamima. You know this is from the Rebbe in Shalom. Torah Shabbat a person has to understand in the Seichel. If he, if he makes a brocha, and he says Torah Shabbat without understanding his Yoitzah. But Torah Shabbat he must understand. When a person gets deep into the sugi about Amachlef Pore Bechamor, he could forget about the Nois in the Torah. The whole reason we're learning the Torah is to become one with Chachmose Ritzoyne Shel HaKadosh Baruch which is a Yichud Nifla like the Alter Rebbe explains in Tanya. But when we're learning Machlef Pore Bechamor, Shnaim Oiches and Betalus, we can forget about it. So therefore, you have to have Havim bechokma, bring a little bit of the bina into the chokma. When we learn Torah we have to learn it with understanding. And also chakem bebina, when we're learning Torah shabbapeh, the toisves and the rajba and the ktsois and the kuntas saachrim, we have to learn it with chakem. When we remember the nakuda, the point of Torah is Torah Sashem. The noisan a Torah, the ebishter, the kedusha a Torah. How do we connect this? So the best way, said the Alter Rebbe, is through reading a Kapitel Tehillim. To reading a Kapitel Tehillim. Kapitel Tehillim is Torah Shebiksav. Not only is it Torah Shebiksav, but it, Tehillim is especially connected to Torah Shebalpeh. David HaMelech asked, You lerots and imri pi, you koirim behem and mizmoire tilim vahoigim v'noitlin aleim schak in a goim vaholas. And Tehillim, we're asking the Rebbe Nishalalim a, 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 a tefillah, like Abba Binyamin did before his davani, before his learning. Rebbe Nishalalim, please help us that we feel through our learning Torah how we're becoming kulachad with the Eibishter. That's why the Alter Rebbe said to say this, Kapitel Tehillim. The Alter Rebbe doesn't explain why this Kapitel, why Kapitel Kufyu Tes, I think it's obvious. Why Kapitel Kufyu Tes? He could pick a Kapitel Kufyu Zion. Machaya. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hashem kol goyim. Finished. You're, you're out. Kaddish Basra. Kufyu Tes, it's a long Kapitel. So the Pashto Pshat is like that. In Chabad, there's always a thing. If you have two ways or two roads, the easy way, the hardest way. You always do the hardest way. <laughs> that's the fallback position. But that's not the, the Gansa Pshat. The Pshat is that Kapitel Kufu Tes is all about one thing. About Torah. Torah is the Shashuyim. Torah is the Shashuyim. Torah is the Shashuyim. The whole Tanya Ape, the whole Tehillim, is, is, is using every one of the letters of the alphabet in eight ways, describing how delicious and how this, the Torah is, the Eibishter's pleasure. And when I'm learning Torah, I'm connecting to the Eibishter's Rotzen and the Eibishter's Chochmah. So that's why the Al Rebbe picked to connect Havim Bechochmah, Vachakim Bemina, to connect Torah Nigla and Torah Sanister, to start with a capital Tehillim. Which capital Tehillim? Which Torah Shabbat Shav Tehillim? And which capital Tehillim? Kuf Yutes and Tehillim. And that's why we're doing the Chalukah Sashas on Yutes Kislev. 
There's a story that the, uh, there was once a goy, they brought him into the base Medish Achsam Soif. They say about other Gdol Yisrael. And they I should say, Ashra Yosha Davan. The Achsam Soif said, This is a goy. How do you know? This is a yid when he davens, there's a certain shokel in his daven. This guy is a goy. We could learn Torah when we learn the Shas, we can learn it like a Chosid of the Alter Rebbe, or not like a Chosid of the Alter Rebbe. It depends when you took the Masechta. If you took it, Yutas Kislev, then you're connected to the special Takon of Yutas Kislev. So then the Alter Rebbe gives us the Koyach and gives us the, it helps us, it gives us the Sayaita, the Shemaya, that when we learn Torah, we should feel that we're Nisatsam, the Kedushas Torah, that we're becoming Kul Chad with the Eibishter. That's the unique thing about the Chalukah Sashas. The Rebbe suggests in a Sicha that someone that can learn the entire Shas like Rabbi Isaac Homler, let him do so. But still should become a member of this special Chalukah Sashas. When, we, when you become a member of this Chalukah Sashas, it's as if you learned the entire Shas. But not only as if you learned the entire Shas, but it's also as if you learned the entire Shas Barabim, Limudat Torah Barabim, with Avas Yisrael, with Ishtatfus of Klal Yisrael. So that's the unique thing. The Rebbe parenthetically explains why is it that today we don't say the Tam Pei, those people that are uh, taking a Masech Shas, Yutas Kislev. The Rebbe says that the Pashtas, the reason is because we're also today doing it together with Tanya. And the purpose we're saying that Tehillim is to connect Havim Bechochma Vechakem Bebina, to connect the Gal Yishabetoyer and the Nista Shabetoyer. But we're doing that through connecting it with Limud Tanya. The, uh, when the Friedrich Rebbe was in Poland, he asked the Chassidim should go out to the shuls and the Chazan avort Chassidus. He said, when they go to the Gerish Tiblach, he said, so they, uh, if they feel that, that, so they should teach Sfas Emes. He said, why? Because I, he said, I was once, I visited the Sfas Emes, and the Sfas Emes told me, Ein vort heile getanye lekutte teure, scheint und blitzt und flackert auf die Herz. That one word of Tanya, one word of Lakut Torah shines and it, it puts your heart on fire. So now that we're learning Tanya with the Lakut, with the, with the Shas, so therefore there is the, so, so, so we're not so strong on, on the top. But the idea is to connect the Galya Shadu Torah, Nista Shadu Torah. Therefore we're making both Siyumim tonight. And not only that, but Chazal uh, say, "Ena golis meskanches ela beschus hamishnayis." And Mashiach Tzidkenu told uh, the Balshemtiv that shefutsa minasecha chutsa kaosim mar da malka Mashiach. So there's two things that Mashiach will come beschus of learning Talmud, and the uh, Mashiach will come beschus of teaching the Pnimis Atayra. So Yutas Kislev, we're connecting the both of them together. The Rebbe Rayat said when he started to learn Tanya with his father, the Rebbe Rashab, he told him that Tanya is like Chumash. Every yid could take something from it, from the godel shebegdoylem to the katan shebegtanem. There's a story that the uh, Rebbe Socher Ber of Radishitz, the Saba of Radishitz, he once visited. He was a uh, he, uh, two of his friends, son of the Noy de Bihuda, Rebbe Yaakovke and the uh, Rebbe Zalman Magolus. Someone brought him that time the Tanya. Tanya was published. You know, the person said he he doesn't understand what's written in this book. So the the. the the Saba of Radish had said, you know, this book, we're really going to understand when Mashiach will come. But the MS is that by learning this book, it gives us a chayis in the entire Avodah Hashem. And befrat, a chayis in Limadat Torah. And memela, with this wezoichah, that ka'osimar, the Malka Mashiach. And the Mashiach's coming is the chashai, special shaykh, the Yutas Kislev. And because Mashiach will come, there'll be shalom. And that's the Indian of Poda B'Shalom Nafshi, which is, brings us to the beginning and the end of Shas. The beginning of end of Shas, the beginning of Shas is Meim Asakoyed in the Shema, the of Yiddish Shemaim, to start Limud Torah with Yiddish Shemaim, which is connecting it to Yutas Kislev. And the end of Shas is about Sholem. The Tois Vishyamtav says, what, What's a Shaykhaz mit Sholem? The Tois Vishyamtav says that the person sees the Tamid Chachomim, <coughs> the Tamid Chachomim, <laughs> that the uh, Tamid Chachomim looks like uh, they say Tamid Chom Marbim Sholem. <laughs> Uh, so there was uh, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs that gesagt that uh, this this is the one joke he found in the Siddur. So uh, 
The where is, where do you see that Tamid HaChachamim Ma'abim Shalom Ba'olam? So said the Toysus Yom Tev, that you might think that Tamid HaChachamim are always arguing. So therefore it says, Tamid HaChachamim Ma'abim Shalom Ba'olam. So says the Rebbe, no, it's more than that. Tamid HaChachamim make Shalom between the world and the Eibishter. It shouldn't look that the world and the Eibishter is a contradiction. And the Tamid HaChachamim are making through Limud HaTorah, they make Shalom between the Eibishter and the Welt. Which brings us to the Messiah of uh, the Masechta that, that I'm finishing right now, which is Masechta's Christos, one of the four Masechtas that finish the same way. Amar Abel Ozer, Amar B'chanina, Tamid HaChachomim Arbim Shalom Ba'olam, Shalemach, B'achol Banayach, Limude Avaya, V'Rav Shalom Banayach, Al Tikra Banayach, L'Boi Noyach. L'chaim, L'chaim, L'chaim.
Uh, we will ask, we would like to inform everybody that the meat is Lubavitch Shkrite. The chicken also. L'chaim, l'chaim. We have an incredible tzchus, came all the way from Manchester. I was in the yeshiva in Manchester, and I remember as Bochrim, we used to, we used to go to the Rav's house, Rabbi Chazan. He wasn't caught sleeping. You know, there's a story with the Bach, that the Bach was kicked out of the city. They said that uh, because at night there was no lights. It turned out that he was so poor he didn't have money for the candles, really. But Baruch Hashem by Rav Chazan, there's the candles always burning. With no further ado, Nurit Poisek, an orator who came special from Manchester to bring with us, Harav Chazan. And we should use out the gewaltige opportunity to tap into the energy, the reservoirs of the Kedusha of Yutis Kislev. I remember years ago when I was a Bachar in Yeshiva in Montreal, the Mashpia, the great Makubal, Revolf Gringlatz, told the Meiser that there was a Bachar. There was a Bachar who was critically ill, Rachman Aslan, Chidish El. And if I felt the whole avoid of El and Slichis, Roshani was in the Eris Dvoi, Poshi didn't have a Kora. He was out of it. Baruch Hashem, he made a miraculous recovery. But he wrote to the Rebbe that he missed all of the Avaida of El and Tishri. And he asked the Rebbe for a Tikkun. And the Rebbe responded, Yudhis Kislev, it's a Chrash Hashanah Lachsidus, as the Rebbe Nishmas Eden famously wrote. And you could tap into all the Kedusha on Yudhis Kislev. Just Mr. Shabbos, the minute is Mr. Shabbos, people tell Mises and Mav Malke. And Yingerman tells me, it happens to be my Adim. <laughs> he just heard Mamis straight off the press. One of the, he has read the Coil in Borough Park. A Yingerman there is the son of one of the noted Mashpim of our generation, Ramat Zilber, from Suchin, Zal Gazunsain. If I remember, I remember as a Bacher in Tervedas in my youth. The, a Bacher is Murumayam. And he was having, he had a schmooze with an elderly gentleman. And he was a Polish idol. And he tells him, happens to be, he happened to have been one Shabbos in his life in Crown Heights. And somehow he fell into a Fabringen for the first time in his life. And he was stark in And then he heard a Rashi Sikh, he had never heard anything like it. And it was Poshut Mamisha. It was awesome. It was incredible. He had never heard such uncles, such, 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 such diuk, such greatness. It blew his mind. Blaz. And he was a Polish. Between the Sikhs, he went over to the Rebbe. They were singing a nigan. The Rashi Sikh was awesome. It was incredible. It was amazing. And the Rebbe beamed from ear to ear. And the Rebbe said, Azoi was vidu hasmir mahanigiven. Since you gave me his joy and nachas, langs al stuleben. And this Polish Yid from Borough Park told the story to Ramad Chazilber at age 103. As <laughs> came tonight, Yidin around Kolkatsvi Tevil, we get together. Our Rebbe has a no, and the whole shall of the Rebbeim have a no. The Alter Rebbe said, he promised us. Anyone who's Mesameach Bissim Chosi, Dalton Rebbe promised, I will schlep him out 
min ha-meitzer, al ha-merchav, min ha-geshem, al ha-ruach, or min ha-gehenim, like the three girsois, how you do him. So we'll be mshtatif in the simcha of the Alter Rebbe, which is the simcha of the Magir, of his Rebbe, of the simcha of the Baal Shem Tiv, and as we'll soon discuss, the simcha of the Arizal, the simcha of the Rashpi, simcha of the Eibishter. And I wanted to share with you one small, I don't think great, awesome to say tonight, just one simple story, which is a Maisa Yedua that I heard from her parents, Mochkin, Zeich Hatzadik Livroch, one of the Gedele HaMashvim, it concerned one of the great chassidim of the Alter Rebbe, Ramot Chaliyepli, who was very connected. He lived, he was one of the few chassidim in those days who actually was given permission to live in the Pale of Settlement in, in, in Petersburg. actually when the Alter Rebbe got out of Tfisa. He was supposed to go into Ramot house. By mistake, they brought him to the, the fellow who was not yet a chassid's house. And can't do it, I might say. Rebbe was a great chassidim of the Alter Rebbe. Once Ramot Chaliyepli had a son, his various nuschois. I'll tell you the way I heard it from Reparis. He had a son called Rishma Yohu, who was sit one day seriously not well. And the Chosid knows, Rebbe Lishon, the Chiyam and Ayin, the one gets chayas from the Rebbe. So immediately he journeyed to Liadi to ask a brach. Came to the Alter Rebbe's house, the Gaboyim, the Mashbakim, were not letting people in, couldn't get in. And he's the Chosid, and his son's life is on the line. He went around. And he saw through an open window. The Alta Alta Rebbe is lying there, Kedarke Bakridesh, at moments of his pilots, Bepishu Yadayim Veraglayim on the floor. And the Alta Rebbe said, Rebbe Nishalel, Ramat Chaliyepler is Mitsuyan in the mid of Achnos Orchim. And Dover, that this Sadik is Mesu Nefesh for, Yikoshul Bazare, his own child should be suffering. Lahoyer, parenthetically, let me just add, what is the connection? The Maisa Yedua, the Beis Halevi in Zivik Rishin was an Eden by a Chabad Chosid and Zivik Sheni by a Lechevich or Kabriner Koydenavrchos. And every year his Rebbe, this Girsoy is who it was, was it the, the, the Koydenavr or the Rishon Kabriner, whatever, a great tzaddik, used to come to the Beis Halevi Shver when he was an Eden of Kest, a son-in-law living in the house of his father. His Rebbe from the Lechevich or Slonim Kabrin dynasty, used to come visit his chassid, who was the father-in-law of the Beis Halevi, the future of a brisk. And one year, Nebuch, the Beis Halevi had a young son who was critically ill, mamish one foot, not here anymore. And suddenly there comes a messenger, the Rebbe is coming, and he should repair Kasut the Shleim as every year. And he happened to live in a city called Valozhin. It's not a bastion of chassidus, be able to and they heard the Rebbe is coming, it totally like insensitive as a machzach nishvizendik from the whole matzav. This poor child is dying over here and this Rebbe comes and expects, you know, five to roll out the red carpet with a five-star banquet. But the, 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 the shver was a chafort ha-chosit. When the Rebbe hazed and ha-chosit has a munit to and a munit to hear, and a fetish can shayla, didn't ask questions. The Rebbe is coming, the, the viber and the viber and the, the screaming, the shrieking. He, they prepared the whole meal. The Rebbe came in, he wasn't the Siachis at all to the Matzav. And he sat in Pravid with his Siddim, Shulchan Yator. They sang, they said, And afterwards they benched, and then he said, I'd like to see the boy. By that time, the boy broke out into a cold sweat. They called eminent physicians, and they said, Baruch Hashem, he's turned the corner, he will live. And the Rebbe, the Chassidish Rebbe said, Suposhet, the Gemara says in Baba Basra, that it was an Evin Toiv that was totally B'tzavori Shal Avram Avinu. He had this precious stone, this gem, dangling from his neck. And a Chuyla would look at it, and it would be Nisrapa, he would be healed. Where can I tap into this Evin Toiv of Avram Avinu, B'zman Azeh? That's the Mitzvah of Achtos Orchim. Everyone knows that Eurach stands for Eurches, which is the eighth Brach of Shemin Estre, which is the Rufa'ein of Achula V'chulu. And if a person is mitsuyin and achnos orchim, does Alter Rebbe get tain it? Doesn't make sense. It's ever hepech das teira the yikoshel bazari. We're going back to my story when Ramolchel the Epler heard that the Alter Rebbe already knows about the matzav, even though no one informed him. There's no reason to go into the Rebbe. He went straight back to his son. Baruch Hashem, he was nesrap at kanamais. Twenty years down the line. It was already in the time of the Nasius of his son, the middle of Rebbe. 
and he was living in Petterburg, and again his son took critically not well, and there was no time, the Massive was so desperate, there was no time to actually go from Petterburg to Lubavitch, which was in those days, Mahalach of Tavkushana, you know, it was an easy journey. He immediately sent an express letter, he was a Gvir Adir, a very wealthy man, he sent a letter, express, and he reckoned exactly how long it will take to get from Petterburg, the capital city of Tsarist Russia, to Lubavitch, Shtetl, they're able to answer and back, and he was waiting outside of his house for the postman, for the, the mailman to come with the letter back, the Rebbe's answer. Punkat Zugetroffen. Mamish, the mailman, the Davar, was holding the letter, right? And he passes her Matzka Leppler, who is a well-known personality in Stotz. But he said, I have no time to stop for you to find your letter. Because there's a tzor in the Tsarsky Mishvach, in the Tsar's family, his child is critically ill. And they've brought an eminent physician, one of the greatest doctors in the world, from Germany, to deal with it. And it's Skonis de Foschus. And therefore, uh, I can't, I'll come back on the way back from the king's palace, from the Tsar's palace. I'll, I'll be, uh, money talks, or as Bob Dylan once said, money swears. And he gave him a wad of rubles, and suddenly he found the, the letter, punct. And it was a letter, a response from the middle Rebbe. I received your, your letter, Vinitsta Arti Harve, and I had great pain and anguish reading about the matzav of your son. Zorzuch nisht, Yeshua kreiva lovei meirachaiku mikorev. The Yeshua salvation will come from far, umikorev, and from near. Over one thing he added as a post note, Alta Khusu Ala Kesef. Don't jalove, don't spare any expense in getting what you need. What does it mean the Yeshua will come from afar and from near? It seems to be a bit of a contradiction, a steer in a He divinely he runs to the palace. He contacted the Tsar's physician. He told him about the matzav, the condition of his son. He said, it's amazing, the Tsar's son is suffering from the same condition. In the entire Malchus Rusi, in the entire Russian Empire, there are no medicines to deal with it. He brought with himself the medicine from Germany, right? And you could, I'll, I'll give it with you, but it's going to cost you a hintay of this. That costs you a lot of money. And he remembered what the Middle Rebbe said, the Yeshua will come mirachik from, from Iceland, from somewhere far away. But it's mamish under your nose in your city, right? And the Alter Rebbe warned him, Alta Chuyso Ala Kesef, money means no value in such a matzav. He paid the doctor, got the medicine, Baruch Hashem, Itaka Hadi Yeshua. And it seems to my humble mind, I'm a Pashat person, that this story really encapsulates what is Chsidis, what is Yutis Kislev all about. Firstly, we belong to Tarski Mishboch. There was once a fellow from one of the shops, shall I remain nameless, on Kingston Avenue in Crown Heights, and it was delivering to President Street to the Rebbe's house. Rang the bell, the Rebbe sent an answer, and she had to pay. She was very meticulous. She pulled out like a hundred dollar note. And the uh, fellow said, I don't have change. So the Rebbe sent one of the Mashbakim to help out, because in Tsarske Mishpacha halt menish In the in royal family, in the aristocracy, we don't wheel, in regal circles, we don't wheel with small change. This guy that once when the Rebbe Rashab, when the Rebbe Marash passed away, uh, a certain person who was a Chacham Be'enov, right, said to the Rebbe, he was a young man, he was 21, 22, if the Rebbe needs help writing my morim, um, my services are available. So the Rebbe Rashab gave a look at him and he said, in Tsarske Mishpacha, me ken Allah Machshav Azores from Yem Yivoldi. And he started being mafar, and this guy just ran away and never came back. With the expression, in Tsarske Mishpacha, right? There's a Yeshua that comes to us, mirochik What do you mean mirochik? Now the Rebbe says in the beginning of Tanya, Ra'a Kodesh Baruch Hu B'Tzadikim Sheim Wotim, Omad V'Shoslam B'Chol Deir Vodir. The Satna Rebbe in Devrei Yoyal said, what's Shoslam? Doesn't mean just to take thing and to plant it somewhere else. Shoslam means a transplant. Something that comes from an entire different world, a different realm, and is parachuted and transplanted down into a totally different world, that's Shosli. Tzidis, a Rebbe, is someone who doesn't belong to our generation, is head and shoulders above us, we can't even begin to understand. 
when the the beautiful lady, the Aragonus, gave his Askoma on Tanya, it's not well known that Al Rebbe wrote him a letter thanking him, which was chain for, for his Askoma to Tanya. And he wrote that the, the, the Askoma that he got from the Leib, the Aragonus, gave him Uyuz Vitzatsumus, it strengthened him, because that night he had a home, and he saw his holy Rebbe, the Magid, sitting al Kisei Kotri, and Rebbe was standing attending to him, and he said to him, Labor, this I will tell you, that the Sefer that Zalman wrote, that's the Torah of Gan Eden Oeli, it's a Torah which is Torah which is Shasal of a different world, different level. So it's a Torah Mirochik from Garva, a different world, a different sphere, a different level, a different cosmos. Mi the Rebbeim, are always Mikorv. However far, wherever they come from in source, whatever this is, it's Pneumius of Arctic. As the Rebbe explains, whatever that may mean, right? It's Mikorev, it's something that's given into us for us now. A few years ago, there was a kid in the Shluchim. Right. One of the Shluchim was giving a workshop, a friend of mine, Rabbi Wegg from Oklahoma, giving a workshop how to deal with children who are growing up in Allah Shvart and Shlichus. And he told the story that he had an Israeli guy, totally not, uh, not yet observant, as we say, in the trade. And he came in the spall, and he told him, you're going to New York, go past there for dollars. Okay, fine. Costum Kagel, down the country, getting a dollar. He went past the rabbi, and he didn't know how things work. So he tells the rabbi, regards from Rabbi Wegg from Oklahoma. So the rabbi thanked him for his regards, and he said, he just had a baby. And the rabbi gave him $3 for the, for the rachanim. For the baby that was born. Have they ever thought about every child born on Shlichus and Katsvi Some There was another Shliach who was listening, and he said, Hon Nicha, that's all great for those Shluchim who the Rebbe sent out himself before Gimel Thomas. But I was sent out after Gimel Thomas. What Shaykh is like, I'll never see such Kirvashaf, such closeness, such, such intimacy, such warmth, such love from the Rebbe. I'm from a different generation. And he was thinking this Machshav Zora. As he's walking down Kingston Avenue at a break in the Guinness, suddenly there's a tap on his shoulder. And the fellow says, aren't you Rabbi X from, yeah. In Tovshin Nun Aleph, you got a dollar from the Rebbe by dollars. And you went and you were buying something and haphazardly without thinking, accidentally you gave over in my shop. And I've been waiting for years to see you, right? to return the Rebbe's dollar to you. And when did he get this dollar? There's a famous chassid, it's a very famous story, everyone knows it, Jim Kalazarov, one of the famous shluchim in Texas. He was sitting by Yubias Thomas for years ago. And before and he had lunch with one of his gvir, his multi-millionaire philanthropist supporters. And the fellow told him, Mr. Shimke, in the olden days, in the 60s, in the chafs, in the Yudin, in the 50s, Small oil, a few shluchim. The Rebbe knew everybody. It's impossible, physically. How could the Rebbe know what's going on in every little nook and cranny throughout the world? Impossible. He was really bothered, Chimku. Anyway, cut a long story short by the Fabring in that between Sichus, suddenly this machshav zoro that this rich guy put into his brain, does the Rebbe really know what's happening now, whatever? It was bothering him. So the Yitzhar is a woman b'mlachta, he's a smart fellow. He has all of us in the left pocket. And as Shimke is lost in thought in his own world, he sees every eye on 770 is upon him. And the Rebbe called him over. And the Rebbe, the Rebbe said, Shimke varfa vektain machshav vizoros in the l'chayim of a full of That means every single individual, wherever you are. Someone once said, one of the chakranim, one of the, the historians of Ksidus, everyone knows, after Petterberg, after the Gula, the liberation of Yutis Kislev, a new dimension of Chsidis. So we explain it in the depth of Chsidis, in the Hasboro, in the Oymek HaSeichel, in that it now Chsidis is now available intellectually, you can understand it logically. But on the most simple level, the, one of the differences before Petterberg and after Petterberg, before Petterberg, the Alter Rebbe was Ms. Oynin, so many people come to Yechidus, everyone's worried about their cow, about their Gashmias, Tikkutzrochim. As you find letters from Remendel, the Tepsker also had the same gripe and the same complaints. After Yutis Kislev, the Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe, and all the Rebbeim subsequently were able to achieve 
at the same, they say the Baal Shem Tev fasted Tanesim, and he davened numerous tefillahs, that even Bishas Dveikas, he should be able to answer people's shaylas and gashmis to Kenyon. And that only happened after the Chibur of, of, of Yutis Kist. There was a few, I'll tell you a story before I begin talking. L'chaim, l'chaim. A few years ago, there was a, there was a, a, a amateur bocher traveling somewhere in Central Europe. And he sees a Polish Echevraman, who's dressed like a typical Yushalmi, on a tram. He went over to him, Shalom, where are you going? He's going to learn to see this with a certain shliach. We're very superficial people. We judge people by whatever. This guy with the Shemayin of God did not look like the type of guy who would be learning Chassidus Chabad. He asked him, my high. So I'll tell you the story. The fellow was born in the heart of Meir Shor and Pati Ungarn, from a very from Chassidus Shor family. His wife came from the same background. They never left like Mami Shagat within a mile radius. Their whole life was centered. They had five children. After the fifth child was born, the wife went into some kind of depression or something, and she started disappearing. And she said she's by her, by her mother, by her, by her, by her, by her, by her she, Until one night, she doesn't come back. And in the morning, this guy is really worried, where could she possibly be? And she sends him a letter, you are a very good husband to me, right? But you should know, she's off to basically, in a nutshell, she's off the beaten track. I don't know, one of our cousins from the Muslim faith. That girl who grew up in the most tightest, frumest, most sneeristic environment. And she's off. Okay, what should the person do? So yeah, there's five children involved. So suddenly, a few weeks later, but to cut a long story short, she had to sue for civil divorce in Israel, like in the, in the Chok, uh, whatever. Like, and then you get a get, whatever. It was going before a, a, a secular civil court. They had the five top Arab lawyers fighting on the woman's, this woman, Nebuch, who's Nespaker, on her behalf. This guy from Meishar, he doesn't have a clue what, when, where. He doesn't know the ways of the world. He lived in a very, very cloistered environment. What do I do? He gets a lawyer. He'll get a lawyer. One day he met a friend who was a Chabadzka. Tell him, write to the Rebbe. After Gimel Tamas, write to Igris. The guy looks at him like he's out of his mind, like he fell off the Levon. Like, write to Igris. Uh, what do you got to lose? Write. So he wrote a letter to Igris, and the Rebbe, and he picked, opened up at random, and the Rebbe answered, not to be mavater on the Chinuch Yehudi of any single individual Jew, of any Jewish child. His lawyer, this Israeli secular lawyer, was telling him, Listen, you got to make a pshore here. You'll take two kids. She's the mother in Israeli law. They don't care about uh, religion or whatever, right? Arab, nisht Arab, right? Go for it. Try to make a pshore, some kind of compromise. Get out, get out. You know, to fast the marubali, to fast. He read the Igris, where the Rebbe says, you're not mevater on the chinuch of one Jewish child. I'm going for all five of them. And he made sure that his lawyer stands up in court and argues. I kids her. Complete fool, he's not. He gets up to court and he hears his lawyer arguing for a compromise. Al Asar, he tells the judge, he doesn't represent me, I'll, re I'll, I'll represent myself, right? And he argues to the judge, I want custody of all five children. Mehecha, we civil law, chapter, verse, and the whatever, and the Israeli law, which is not unfortunately based on Tayyip, Tarkos. Right? Where is your source? Al Rebbe, the Rebbe, Lubavitch Rebbe's letter in Igris Kodesh Chelik X letters. We cooked of him, the guy's like, out of his mind. Right? The judge said, I'll have to consider it. And that was the end of the case. The five lawyers from her side, these top legal experts spoke as oi. This guy quoted Igris Kodesh of the Rebbe, like everyone in the classroom, the courtroom was laughing. It's like a, a five minute case. The well, the judge went back to chambers to deliberate Kavayochel. Should be not in the Shail, even the Shakramataria. The Ravila, the ex wife, suddenly something snapped in her. As a girl who grew up in Meshur, right? She suddenly snapped and she said, Hitler should have killed more of you guys, right? I'm going to raise my child with my friend Ahmoud, Muhammad, whatever his name is, and I'll make sure the girl grow up to be a freedom fighter, a terrorist. And... The judge happened to hear her entire outburst. 
but he's not going to put these five children in her custody when she's going to grow up, uh, whatever, you know. Al Asari came back. He passed, and all five children are belong to the husband. Case dismissed. And then he sent a message bechashoi to the husband. He says, "There's no shaila in the world that immediately they're going to demand a, a re, the trial to be heard again. The trial should be heard again, and they'll go to a higher court. And the higher up you go, the more fry they are, the more whatever, the more secular they are." You, have no ch you don't have a snowball's chance in whatever Gehenim of winning your, your legal battle. Now you have permission, you have your passports, get out of here. It's exactly what he did. He went to Central Europe because the Rebbe told him not to be mavater on the chinuch of any one Jew. And that's the idea. If you remember the first mimer the Rebbe said, it's a unique in all of history of the Rebbe's mimer where the Rebbe said a, a, a story in the Mimer of each of the Rebbeim. And the Sant, in each of the Rebbeim, the story the, 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 the Rebbe picked was not Aves Yisrael generally. It was Aves Yisrael to every single individual. In other words, Chesidus is something which is midrochik, which comes from the highest on high, and has to be brought down, down here in this world. Because that's what Chesidus is. Let me tell you a story. There was a... I was eager to, to see him, because I knew him, I saw him. In my days, there was an old Rebbe called the Skolyi Rebbe in Borough Park. He married a holy Jew. He once told us, I heard from his father, the Baruch Pinchas. I heard from Alti Yid, who was a Meshamish by Rebbe Isaacal Kamarn, came to mind. That once there was a Yid living in a shtetl somewhere in Poland, and he couldn't make ends meet. He was pushing him and his, his wife and his children were starving. And he decided, better than starve, he moved out of the city, moved to a forest which is nearby, and he built himself as a high school, a little log cabin somewhere. And every day he would travel into the city to find some odd jobs and try to earn enough money to keep body and soul together. Here you are after, after a while, suddenly he took ill, and he saw a halt, he's not going to be much longer in this world. When a state is sitting there on his deathbed, basically, and his daughters were like hysterical, he's going to die alone in a vault. So they ran to the Aim Hadera, to the highway where when people stop, to try to flag someone down, at least to be with their father, to say Nishma, to say Vidu, to say Nishma Yisro. And a carriage with six horses, and, you know, stallion comes passing by, Agvir, and he stopped, and he went with the guy. And he's going to say the last rites, as we say. But beforehand, he said, you know, the, the, his wife was crying and veining and clogging. What's going to be with her? She'll be an almana. She's going to have the pruta. Right? If daughters to marry off, how are they going to do it? The rich fellow says, I'm very wealthy. I'll make a deal with, it, with the guy who's the sick man. My whole life, I'm wondering, what do they say in Shemayim about this? It was my great question in life. Do they view the Hasidic movement positively or negatively? I'll make it kiyas kaf with the fellows about to go to Elohim's. When you go there, come back to me in a cholom and tell me what's up in my life. And if you do, I promise I'll support your almona and I'll support your children and I'll bring them to the chup. I'll pay for every Kala until they get married. The deal's a deal. He shook hands. He said the last prayers. The fellow passed away. Shavachayim lechulchayim. And a week later, he comes back to the rich guy in a dream, and he says, they don't give me resources to say everything, but I'll tell you one, one story they just told me that I'm allowed to tell And the story was of a fellow who lived a singularly righteous, pious life. He was from A to Z. Bez and heard his case, and they straight to Ganeid. Then they asked him, did you ever hear terrorists of the Baal or Talmidov? The Baal Shemtiv, Baal Shemtiv? And he said, it was silence. Because they didn't know what was the right answer they want to hear in Beth and Shomayla. What, what answer will open up the gates and what not? Because he heard down here different days. Beth and Shomayla asked a second time, and again, he doesn't answer. Finally, three times they asked, you can't play around with us in, Eden, in Beth and Shomayla. He doesn't answer. They shipped him off to Gan Eden. But he was a sagi 
he was blind. Couldn't see. It's no fun being in paradise in Gan Eden, right? And everyone else could see what's going on, and you're, you're pushing blind. So he said, some banging, and hacking, and clapping, where's, where's justice? They said, they called him back to Beth and Shulmail, and they said, you know what? We asked you what you hold of the Baal And three times you tried to evade us, and you can't evade Beth and Shulmail. And the light of the Baal Shem Tov is Be'etzem, the air of the Zohar HaKadosh, of, 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 of Pneumius HaToyer. Right? You didn't answer. You lived a sh- upkeep life. No one could fault you. Right? You're a pious person, a righteous, God-fearing person. But you had, no, you had the opportunity, and you didn't connect yourself. So f- he asked for Tachnun and for Rachmim. They allowed his Nesham to come down one more time, Raivet the Raivet, to hear the Baal Shem Tov say, Toyer in Mezhevush. And then he came up, and no longer was he blind. Lalderev says a story that one of the great sinners of the Alter Rebbe, the Israel of the Brovin. He had a son who was never became age six, if I remember. Sorry. He became a Saginor. He took him to the Alter Rebbe, and the Alter Rebbe opened up a Zohar Hakodesh and said, "Read." And he couldn't read. The Alter Rebbe flipped another place, read, and now he could read, but kikav, like 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 a sif, dots, certain places he could see and certain places not. The Alter Rebbe mished up to a third place, and now he could read perfectly. And that, that, that um, person who grew up, he was called the Pshlima of Tshachinik, the famous Nigan that he composed, right? And that Pshat is, that that is the Geula of Yutis Kislev, an Ur, Vachayus, Narshenu, Nitinlonu. There's a Lichtekeit, a light. How did we get this light? How is the Rabbeim able to be Mamshich from the highest level, from Mirachai to Mikorov down here? Only one thing, Mr. Nefesh. There was a chassid called Rabbi Shua Dabrowski. It was a chassid of Rabbi Marash. And one day he was traveling to the Lubavitch, and he was passing by a city called Molov, where the Malbim was rov for three, three years. And he couldn't get a train to Lubavitch. There's no train to Lubavitch. A train to wherever, Rudni or... Depends where you're going on it, right? You, know, you probably know better than Splendid, yeah. Right? The train was going the next morning, he had to stay overnight. So he met the Malvin, and the Malvin, Malvin was the Malvin. And he said, You're going to Lubavitch, do me a favor, ask the Rebbe Shaila, I can't make heads or tails. The Medrash Plea. The Medrash Plea says on the Pasik, Where is the sheep to slaughter? Yitzhak is asking his father from Avina by the Akedah. So the Medrash Pliya says, Va'ayya Sela Oilo, says the Medrash, Odom Doyeg al Ibu Domo, Ve'ene Doyeg al Ibu Yomov. People are, you know the story, people are from Daigit on losing their blood, their money, and not worried about losing their lives. What in the world I can do with Ayya Sela Oilo? Pili Pili place. So the Rebbe Marash, he told the Rebbe Marash to what the Malb asked him, he said, very simple. Yitzhak Avinu was a Bechor Le'imoy, to Sorry. And a Bechor is brought with a Korban, it's Kachim Kalim, and there's a Matan Achas, Negadayis, Negadayis, you sprinkle the blood once. On the other hand, he's being brought up as an Oila, which is Kodesh Kodoshim, which is a Matan Dalit. Four times you sprinkle the blood. And, and, and Yisrael couldn't figure out how is Avram going to work the, the sprinkling of the blood, the Zrika, which is the Marats in the Korban. V'ayi asel the Oila, odom doyeg al imud damov. People are worried about the, the, how to sprinkle the blood, but he wasn't worried about losing his life. Because the whole mahus of a Yitzchak or a Tzadik is to push a Gibzich Ibr and Ramach Ivorov and Shazagidov with his whole being. There was a big chosit called Rabbi Yisrael Nevler. One of the great cities in the middle of his times. And when the, everyone knows that after the Rebbe Nishmas Aiden passed away in Rastov, Beis Nissen, Tovrish Pei, the, there was a time, not long afterwards, that the Friedrich Rebbe became critically ill. He had a certain type of typhoid, and he was out of it. He was, someone else had a double for the Omud. He couldn't do anything. He was just lying in bed. It was thrown never. I don't know if the story is well known. I never knew it till whatever. He was walking in the corridor of the Rebbe, the Friedrich Rebbe's house, apartment, and he heard when the Rebbe got better already. He was on the re- 
recovery, recuperating. He heard the Rebbe Rayats tell his Rebbetzin, Nechamedina, that when he was critically ill and he was in like a coma, his father, the Rebbe Nishmael Hussein, came to him and said, the Kitrug is very, very schwer, and he's been to all the Hecholos in Shemayim, to to try to Rachman, to no avail. And there's one more place that he could still go, and that's the Hechel of Al-Shamtiv. And if he's successful here, he'll, he'll make it. If not, it's all over. And I'll come back to you in a few hours. And indeed, a few hours later, the Rebbe Nishmasin came to his son, the Friedrich Rebbe, and he told him, I was able to be poiled by the Hechel of Al-Shamtiv, that you're going to live. You're going to make it through. In the schus, that you were moister nefesh when the when the Friedrich Rebbe was a manal poil of Tehuchet Mimim, that you were moister nefesh for the Bachrim. The moister nefesh of the Friedrich Rebbe to the Bachrim was kaseid. I'll tell you one story that I know. There was a tkufa that the, constantly the Friedrich the Rebbe the, 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 the Rebbe Rayatz asked his father the Rebbe Nishmas Eden for a bracha for benindicher for for male offspring. He had three daughters. He wanted a zacher. And every time the Rebbe, the Rebbe Nishma was saying, was doich, now is not the time. Now, the common Israel, I'll tell you, but now is not the Israel. One time they were sitting by a fabrengen, whatever, and, uh, and the Rebbe Rashab turned to his son and said, now you could ask. Ask what you want. The punkt was a time where the Bachar were being drafted to preserve to the, the Russian army. And the Fidu Rebbe forgot completely about his own personal needs. And what did he ask about? He asked about the Bachram. And the Messiah, I mean, go on and on and on, but the, 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 before we even begin, the whole kunz of, 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 of Yitzhak Kislev is the Rebbeim are bringing something mikoriv umirach. Let me leave you with one story, the Bible. I don't know if you know, like, history of Chassidus, but the al Rebbe was a Talmud of the Magid, and his Chavrusa was the Malach, the Magid's son. The Malach had a the, the Malach had a son called Shalom of Trovich, who was the father of the Sabakadish of Rizhna. He died, passed away from the world very young. He were all special Jams. Anyway, to cut a long story short, when the Alter Rebbe was arrested and spent 53 days in jail, this was Shalom Provicher, who was his father was a chavar of the Alter Rebbe. They were mates, they were the best friends. He was marish oilimus, he was fasting, he was married with feelings, he goofed, to just to get out of whatever, free. Suddenly, one night, and the Shalom Prophet turns to his chassidim, to his mekorovim, and says, the rav is a rois. The balatanya, the Alter Rebbe, is liberated, free from jail. And in those days, there weren't all these things he used with the thumb, but I don't know what to call them, mass uh, social media, what is it? Like, uh, you know, like, whatever. I live in a different world than the rest of them, everyone. What? No Twitter, no Facebook, whatever these things are called. Facebook. Right? And only a while later did the news come that Al Tadab was Takar out of jail. So they asked him, Shalom Prophet, how did you know? The Shalom Prophet said, There's a Zoyer I call the Parishes Vayechi. I get what the whole year in the Zoyer. Don't expect the feet, the footsteps of Mashiach. Don't look forward to the, the footsteps of Mashiach until you see this keshes, this rainbow, with a special glow, a special luminosity and radiance. And suddenly, the night of Yutis Kisul says, Mishalom Pravicher, I saw the rainbow with the Gavna de Nehir. And I looked at the hasn't yet come. The only other possible explanation could be as the Rav is a Ruiz, and this Chalta de Geula, the beginning of the preparations of spreading of Siddhis, which brings Mashiach, has already started. This is a story that Rabbi El Khan always says, Zogzun Tzayn always says. I looked it up in Rijinus for him. And the source is, I told to one of the original Rebbe's, from Shul Merotu, who was the Abezin of Chernovitz, the author of the Kolm of Asr, whose Zayda was a mashpak by the Sabakadish of Rizhin, and he added one kvetch that I didn't see that Rebbe didn't say. 
he said, Rav Shalom Provich wrote this down in a letter to the Alter Rebbe of how, how he was fighting, campaigning to get the Alter Rebbe released from jail. And the simon, to remember that I'm, what I'm telling you is true, is that when they told you the Besura, that you're being liberated, you were holding by the Pasuk, Poda B'Shalem Nafshi, right? This is before they heard Rabbi Rosef's uh, talk, right? Yeah. Poda B'Shalem Nafshi. But the first time the Alter Rebbe said it, he switched it, for, he said instead of Poda B'Shalem Nafshi, he said B'Shalem Poda Nafshi. Which he said was a reference to him that through his intervention, B'Shalem Poda Nafshi. That was the original addendum to the story. But what's shot in it? When do you see a Keshes? When, when, when who, like Marshall, unlike Boimer, we play with a Keshes. With a Keshes. Rashbi is a Hefta from a Keshes. Rabbi Shua ben Levi, it says in Sforam, there was no Keshes Biyomov. Why not? As the Gemara says. Because the Gemara says in Ksuvis of Ayin Zayin, he was the one who was Moiser Nefesh for Teirah. Ichrich with the Bali Rasan, the people with the most communicable, contagious diseases. He was the one who dealt with them. He was Moiser Nefesh for Teirah. Therefore, you know who the Baal Shem Tivs, you know who Rashbi was? He was a Gilgul of Achi Ashiloini. You know, Achi Ashiloini lived in the times of Yeravim ben Avot, who made a piluk in Klal Yisrael, split Klal Yisrael, a schism, who brought Avay de Zora into Klal Yisrael. What does Achia mean? He unified Klal Yisrael. He, he attached, he put together the, the fragments of a Klal Yisrael. And that was the Neshama of Rashbi. And therefore, Achi Ashiloini was later the Rebbe of the Bashantif. Because the whole idea of Siddhis, Harav Yisrael ben Eliezer, everyone knows, is Gimachia 1118, which is Yechudi Lo, Shema we didn't have Achtus. Therefore, just like Rashbi was in the Meirah for 13 years, this kid do it. Therefore, the word I want to say is, just before I even begin, The Iker is, before you think about anything you to Kislev, the first thing one has to mention is the importance of Poshet learning Chsidus. Chsidus is Pshat, everyone knows, I have to like Gimatria, that's my own, my, whatever. What is the Gimatria of Shema Yisrael? 1,118. Yechudilo. And Baruch Shein and Vod, 1,358. Yeah? What's the difference between Yechudilo and Yechudilo Tato? Ni? Anyone alive here? Make believe your life. 240? I'm Malik. A Molek has no problem with the Ebrister and Olam Hatzilus and Atik and Arich and a holy. A Molek Yodok is Yudke, right? He is mafia between the Yudke and the Vovke. There shouldn't be a Shechina down here in the world. Yehudi Law doesn't bother a Molek. A Molek's Luchom is Mitachas Hashemayim, down here in this world. Therefore, 240 is that which is mafia between Yehudi Law and Yehudi Tato. What is Chsidis? Chsidis is not. As people, superficial people, Chitonistika people think, a school of preparation for the coming of Mashiach, Yefutsu Menasech Chutzov, Tan Kao Simar. See, this is not just a preparatory step, but even school. Today, everybody loves in the world, I don't know, things are in New York, I come from England, everybody likes shortcuts. You know, everybody likes schools. A guy has a tzora, I'll tell him, learn, daven, check him, do normal things, no. If I'll tell him, go to the mikveh and drink three quarters of a lug of mikveh water and say, Kapitel Kufiud Bey, standing on your head upside down, everyone goes for it. Everyone wants. And I always tell my children, there's a famous line, a quotation of a wise person who said, there are no shortcuts to any place in life worth going. As I tell my children always, the only place where success comes before work is in the dictionary. In this world, you have to hold of them. There's a derech harucha, the derech ketzara, which we'll speak about it. But chsidis is the beginning of a journey to bring Mashiach. It's not a shortcut, it's not a school. Rabbi El always tells the story, there was chsidim once sitting at a fabreng, and there were, everyone knows that Altar Rebbe had in the Shoma Chadosha. Shoma Chadosha, Reb Zusha was like, there's, there's numerous stories about the Talmudia Magid, how they responded, how they re reacted to the Altar Rebbe having in the Shoma Chadosha, Nun Neshom. Now, there's actually two pshatim, and what does it mean in Neshama Chadosh? Simple pshat is, all Neshamas were called in Adam Arishna, and then all of our Neshamas are recycled, reincarnated, we're all Gilgulim from whatever. That's a Neshama Chadosh is a Neshama that was never recycled since Adam Arishna got it. 
There's a higher type of a neshama chadasha, a neshama that was not included in other marishim chadil. That was not nifkom in the chet etzadas, which is a radically different type of neshama. And once Sidon was sitting at a fabring and somewhere in Karnites in some anonymous shtibul and arguing what kind of neshama chadasha did Dalta Rebbe have. Until one guy, it was a pashut fellow, had money in Pistama. So he decided to write to the Rebbe. He wrote to the Rebbe, the shah settled, wanted to know. He got, boy, did he get back a sharp settle. The Rebbe, wrote, the Rebbe wrote back to him, what's it negate to you in your avidus and Hashem? What kind of neshama did the Rebbe have? Oh, but the funny thing is that years later, when the Rebbe was Magia, the Kuntus, the other of Teres there when he wrote out the Rebbe had a neshama chadosh, he's been saying to the Which means it's a neshama which is connected to Geula, neshama, et cetera, et cetera. And therefore we have a principle. I'm saying this not only because to Lubavitchers, to everybody. There's a principle, we have a Kabbalah from, from the Chernobyl Magid, speaking, every hero tshuva that will be be Moisam al Shemtiv till Moshiach is from the Kriyach al Shemtiv. Any guy who's what you call today in your magazines in America, the cure of activists, whatever, it's all connected to the Kriyach al Shemtiv. There was a lull of a Rebbe, I was able to know, to see, and he had a dream. So if you don't, he actually came, right before he passed away, he came to Manchester. He had a dream. And in his dream, he met his elder Zayder, David Lulliver. And he, he was, in Bechayev, he was very, very close to the Baba Sali. And he asked, the Baba Sali was a canoe for the covenant of Hashem, he moved out of Yavna because of it, etc., etc. Et There's many, many things that the Baba Sali said. He considered himself like one of the, like a Rebbe. And he asked the V. Kuntus that he who grew up in Morocco should have such a warm connection to the Barshem to the Chuxidus. And Rabbi David Lelover told his Enikel, Rabbi Shimon Osneta, that there was a Tkufa, that they were shoftened by Kal Yisrael, there was a Tkufa, there was Nevi'im, there was Anshik Desagdoyla, there were Tanoyim Akdoyim, there were Meroyim, there were Anshik Furoy, there was Ga'inim, there were Rishonim, there were Akroinim. From the Balshemtiv till Bias Amashiach is a Kuf of Talmud Balshemtiv. And if a person wants to attach himself in it, that's what it's all about. And the moral of the story, what am I telling you this for? People often think that Siddhis, I had a little, I was having, we we're eating at my, 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 my daughter's house now. I have a little grandchild, maybe seven, how old is he? I don't know, seven. He told me a new Gimachi I never knew before. It was new to me. Chsidis Chabad is Gimatri Amun Apshuta. Never knew this before. Knew this before. New to me. People think Chsidis Chabad is for philosophers, theologians, Hechremenchen, Ferbai Homler, Hill Paracher, like you know, people. Chsidis Chabad is Machti Amun Apshuta Tahira in Kal Yisrael. And it changes people's lives. I have a Mechutin who lives in Antwerp. His name is Rav Shabtai Slavitsky. That's how he even he He tells me a story. I love this story. He said he's a kind of a lot of person. He came from a Polish background. Chesidish, he's warm to Chesidish, but he's not a Lubavitcher. And his wife was scared. What is he bringing in these new things? You know, people are always scared of the unknowns. Someone once said, we hate people because we don't know them. We don't know them because we hate them. Bringing in strange things with a rebel, a Babish Rebbe, and they're, they're different, and whatever. They came, Shoyinus, we call Om, and they're... She was very scared and skeptical and a bit... Eventually he sat and learned and whatever and he changed. And now his Rebetzin, his Yidina was Mamish. And she told my Mechateinister, when my husband first started learning with your husband, and I was very nervous, I thought my husband is bringing a Naya Rebbe in Shib. He's bringing a new Rebbe in the house. And now I see that Fakir, it's not that my husband brought a new Rebbe in the house, is that the Rebbe has brought to me a new husband. I have like, I just thought, I, I thought, in my family now, every Friday night, after we finish the Shabbos, we get together, we have now my Morim of Uorim, so every, one Maimer per parasha. Sit and learn every Shabbos with your family, a Maimer from the Rebbe. Learn, in my shul, I have a shul, the name of my shul, my synagogue, is called the Holy Law Synagogue. That should tell you something about where it was when I took over. Like English, like, you know, like, whatever. England is in 
in Yiddish, what Mitzrayim means in Lashon Kodesh. It's like the net, right? People were so scared. I started a shir in Tanya. Shabbos morning, Friday before Davin. And when we finished, after years, we finished Sefer Shalbein in him, right? We made a see him. And a man who's a very wealthy lawyer stood up and he said, Rabbi, I must, as Chatoyani Mouskir, when we started this, I came for your COVID just to help you out at the beginning of the shear. People should come. And I figured I'll spend one or two weeks at the shear and then I will disappear. Not for me, this is totally a different, not up my alley. He said, I started listening. And he went online and he bought this kind of Tanya, that kind of Tanya. He said, the Revival, 10 years down the road, it's changed my entire life. And the Abish should help all of us and our families and our Sviva, all of us should be poiled at the oil, the light, the highest of Siddhas should permeate our entire lives. The Chayim, the Chayim.
What to choose as needs Rabbi Rosa. Mechaim, Mechaim. Many years ago, when the Rebbe first became a Rebbe, he lived in a flat in an apartment, president in New York. And there was a boy from a Gera family, Tamantaira, who was charged with the mission of collecting stucca. And he was knocking on door to door. It was entirely Jewish section at the time. He was knocking on doors and doors to collect money for his, for his worthy cause. And he knocked on the Rebbe's door without knowing who was the resident, who was the occupant. And the Rebbe soon opened the door. And uh, he's a Gera, a Gera Bachel. And he said, can I speak to the Balabas, please? And sure, she brought him in. And the Rebbe was sitting there in his shirt sleeves learning. And his dining room table was full of Sforim, Amish, old pile of Sforim. And the Rebbe asked him what he wants. The Rebbe gave him money. And the Rebbe asked him, tell me something what you learned today in Cheder. And Geras, who are some of my best friends are Geras, I'm like, uh, whatever, but it comes from Kutsk, and they're very sharp, and, you know. He had no idea who was he speaking to. And he said, in Cheder we learned, because the Geras are really like fire, in Cheder we learned that Ma'alahalon be'ima be'yira be'reses u'bezir Afkan be'ima be'yira that one has to learn Torah as if you're standing at Har Sinai with the same Yiddish Shemayim, the same awe, etc. And therefore one doesn't learn Torah without a beggar alien, without a outer garment. And the Rebbe looked at the little boy and he smiled. He said, Ich v'oich kahatach siddusha chinuch. And me has been always learned that the main thing is what's under the garment. Very similar story happened many, many years later when the Rebbe moved to his house in President Street. The Rebbe, for whatever reason, he liked his, when he used to learn, he used to like it very, very cold. The air conditioning was always blasting. And once the air conditioner in the Rebbe's house on President Street broke down, so immediately the Mashpakim had to get a repairman. Now, there are plenty of Lubavitcher air conditioner repairmen, but you can't send the Lubavitcher to the Rebbe's house because the guy will sit there and uh, he'll be sitting there, he won't be able to do uh, work. They got a Polish guy from Borough Park, a Satmer fellow, a nice guy, from the, from the Yellow Pages, whatever, and they got him to go to the Rebbe's house in President Street, not explaining what, when, where. Just arrive at this address. And the fellow did the job, and afterwards the Rebbe said, who was very regal and aristocratic, she invited the repairman, as was her derech, have a cup of coffee with a piece of business, you know. And he thanked the Rebbe, and he sat down to have his coffee after doing his work, good job. And he smiles and he says, um, ma'am, madam, is it, am I, I mean, this is not the first time I've ever been to Crown Heights. I've been to Crown Heights on jobs and repair jobs before. But is it correct to say that almost all the families in Crown Heights are Lubavitchers? And the Rebbe said, yeah, it's true. He says, Am I correct to assume that this house is one of the few exceptions? It's not a Lubavitcher house? <laughs> and the Rebbe is sort of looking at this fellow like her husband is the Rebbe, her father was the Rebbe, her mother was a Rebbe's daughter, like all from Geza Chabad, from every possible way. She's the Enoch of the Altero. So she asks him, what makes you think that this is not a Lubavitcher house? So the Satmar fellow from Bar Park, well-meaning. He says, because it's the only house I've ever been to in Crown Heights that doesn't have a picture of the Rebbe on the wall. So I'm assuming that it's not a Lubavitcher house. The Rebbe was not, without batting an eyelash, she responded that the picture of the Rebbe does not have to be on the wall, it has to be in the heart. Which is an incredibly wise, profound, sagacious response. And the moral of the story is, that Chabad generally, did not put much emphasis on chitzonius, on superficiality, on externals. On the contrary, we all know, just put back derech, hagdomo, we all know we're living in one of the most trying generations ever since creation. 
the generation right before Mashiach comes, Chazal say, the Zoyer says, Vaiman li is damin, but woe to anyone alive in this generation. Sadiqim said, it will be as difficult to be an elder Chiyid as it was for Ramavinu to go to the Akedah, as it was, Sadiqim said, it will be as difficult to be elder today as it is to krich up gleich event. There will be so many Nisyonis, which are Mahilim and Rosh. There's a Kabbalah from Hashem Lezer, Ratzvet Hashem in Kemdomo, one of the youngest sons of the Debechayim, that before Mashiach comes, 95% of Torah and Mitzvahs will be in the hands of the Samach Mem, which is awesome. The Samach Mem, I heard from his father, the Kedush Yontif, that there once was a Rebbe who had a Chosset, who never cured me the Chosset, he lost his entire wealth, bankrupt. He asked the Rebbe for a bracha, his Rebbe, and the Rebbe looked up to heaven and he saw the gates of Parnassah are closed. This guy will remain in only the Evian his entire life. What should he do? The Rebbe said. He was going and he went to a passing by of some kind of forest and there was a Bismedjish there. And he went inside and there was a Rebbe there. And he said, why, why the long face? Why do you look so cr crushed and dejected and broken and depressed? And he told them that he lost all his money in business, and his rebbe told him the shari, shari parnos are close for it. <laughs> Go into the vault over there, take 200 paces this way, hang a right, dig, and you'll find a treasure trove. He found a, tre a chest of golden coins, and this is like Mamish, he became a millionaire overnight. He's back on Easy Street. Instead of going home, tell his wife, the first thing he did, he went back to his Rebbe to tell him the Basura Teva that he found this other Rebbe in this Basmedrash or whatever, and he found this treasure trove. The Rebbe said, let me see one of the coins. So he took one of the coins out of the golden coins and he examined it, he studied it very studiously. He says, you should know this coin comes from Sitra Acher, from Klippa, from not, not the holy side. Go back to that Rebbe and tell him that he's a shliach of the Samach Mem and give him back all the money and tell him, say, Tom, may beat it, scram, get lost. And if you don't, you'll have this treasure trove. But you yourself will be nulkad, you'll be, you'll be attached yourself to the clipper and you're fafalim. Your neshama is... First day, it's a bit of a nisoyin, I would imagine. But he listened to his Rebbe. He went back to the Rebbe and he said, say, Tom, may my Rebbe says, you're from Sitrach, you're from Klippa, beat it, scram, I have nothing to do with you, here's your money back, Bosmero. So this rebel laughed and he said, it's taka true, I am a shliach of the Samach Mem. Has to be the Sarah La Hashem and the Sarah La Zazel has to be Shavah B'Kayim B'Mah Rebbe Domin, whatever. Zelu Umazah. Or go back, listen to the punchline, go back to your Rebbe and tell him that I said, I'm the Rosh HaShluch of the Samach Mem. Tell him that I said that you're also one of us. Even though you don't know it, even though it's on a subconscious subliminal level, but you're also from Sitrach. With a very heavy heart, he went to his Rebbe, told him. The Rebbe kicked out everybody from him. And at the side, made a chesh, deep Cheshber Hanefesh, somewhere in Omke Hanefesh, deep, deep down. I mean, Sitrach, he was a Yir Tzadik. But he, somewhere there was a Pagam in Dakos, Shebedakos. Took off his Shreimel, Uis Kapolich Macher. And the rest of his life, he Pravid Golos. From one Huyf, from one Chosser, from one Rebbe to another Rebbe. And the Satmar Rebbe's father, the Jewish Yantav, met him in Sands by the Holy Divrei Chaim. And when the Satmar Rebbe, the Divrei Yoyal, will complete the story, he said, You have a man who can look at a coin and could examine it, and he knows whether it comes from Kedusha or the Lumaza, and he himself was Mesitrach. So the, one of the, the, the Iker Nisyonis of our generation is the lack of clarity of Midas so Ms versus Midas HaSheker. Or to put it in other terms, similar terms, we have a Milchoma going on between Pnimius and Chitzonius. I remember, I, I always say this story, many years ago I was a kid growing up in New York and the garbage collectors went on strike and you leave the garbage in New York in the streets, you get rats and mice and vermin. What did he do? He told his wife every, every day, take the garbage, the, the, the bin liner, put it in a box. And he went around the corner to the gift, to his store, and he bought himself gift wrapping paper with a bow and a thing, you know, and a schmetzel on top. And he gift wrapped the rubbish, 
put it in the back seat of his car, left the door open, had to walk around the block with that fail. Every day his garbage problem was resolved. And I often thought about that little hoodlum who broke into the thing and he took that box, it must be up to the VCR, up to the television, a computer, a what is, right? And he opens up and he takes all the gift wrapping paper and the bow and the ribbon and all. And what's he left with? A hunk of junk. And there's so much in modern life, which is the chitzoni, it's a superficially, it looks so attractive and seductive. And inside it's so, so empty. And that applies in from Kite also. I remember when I was a little kid, I went, I was, used to be a mole when I was growing up, Pesach, everyone used to go to Palisades Amusement Park. And I once was there as a little kid, and I, no one, I, hope, I don't think anyone would take offense, but there was a, I was a little child, near like the grasshopper, and I watched, there's a guy with, a, with an old shrine of a god, with a shrine of ice, he's in the works, and he's, he put a little girl on the carousel, on the horse, what do you call it, the horse, merry-go-round, right? And she started crying, so he gets on the horse with her, because she was alone, she was a young little kid. And I could see, I could read the bubble on his mind. He's, he feels very you know, uncomfortable wearing a shamel on a horse that's about to start. So he took off the shamel. Next question, you got to hold on to something, otherwise it'll fall off. So what did he do? He put the shamel on the horse. And then the light started flashing and the music started playing. And I'm watching the shamel going round and round, this horse with the shamel round and round and round. And I thought that is like indicative of the generation we live. With the Vashem Tov said, Sheker will be Chein, and Hevel will be Yoifi. And as the Vilna Gaon said, it's a generation of Shitchis, of superficiality, of externals. What is Chsidis all about? Chsidis is all about Pnimis. What is the difference between a Chitzin? And the Bavitch Chitzinius was Muktzamach Mazmis. A cardinal sin. If anyone called you a Chitzin, that was like the worst name they could give you. What is a Chitzin? What is a Pnimi? A Chitzin learned something. Does a mitzvah, he and the learning, he and the mitzvah are two totally separate from the front. Separate issues. A pnimi is misatzim, he becomes one with that which he learns and that which he does. He puts his entirety of his being into the, into the act that he's doing now. The Alter Rebbe once was traveling and he was sitting, passing by the city of Shklov. And in the Maimur that he said, the Alter Rebbe explained that Neshamis are Pnimius and Malachim are Chitzonius. Jewish souls are Pnimius, inward, from a deeper, intimate part of the Abishter. And Malachim, although they're both Shluchim of the Abishter, Malachim are Chitzonius. You can imagine Shklov was a city where, in today's politically correct lexicon, you would call them, they were Chitzonically challenged, right? How could the Alter Rebbe have the chutzpah to call the Malachi Elin, the Malachi Asharis, Chitzoni? And they demanded the Alter Rebbe show a mocker, but Dafka from Nigel Shepetel, in Gemara. So the Alter Rebbe said, Pasha the Gemara. The Gemara says, al yishana A person should never change from the accepted custom. Shari Moshe Ola Lemore. Moshe ascended to heaven 40 days and 40 nights. Lechem Le'ochel. He didn't eat, he didn't drink. And the Malachi Asharis went down to Avram and he gave him Gimel Shainas of Khardal with, 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 with an entire meal, Kasuta Shlaim Shaitik. Says the Gemara, Ochu Salkadaitak, do you think the angels actually ate bread, physical, tangible, corporeal bread? They made themselves, it appeared as if they ate, says answers the Gemara. Says the Alter Rebbe, that's the difference between a Pnimi and a Chitz. A Pnimi, what he does, he does with Pnimius, with an emiss. And a chitzin is worried about public opinion, Miami Rabrius, right? And therefore he does something to give an appearance which the appearance that he gives off is not necessarily true. And the Rebbe in a Sicha, Chagashvu, is Tavshin Tazvav, said, What is the Hayro for us? That when a Yid learns to when a Yid does mitzvahs, he does so not thinking b'shas the limud, or b'shas the, when he's learning or b'shas he's doing the mitzvah about his schar, about a pnei ishis, about some personal aggrandizement, something that he will gain from it, whether it's begatnius, whether it's begruchnius, whether it's even schooly. 
a yid is thinking when he a pneumiastic a person when he does a mitzvah we thinking of one thing and one thing only how can i be good in nachasura i don't care what happens he's totally bottled in doing what the abishter wants let me try to explain this i don't want to be let me just be back as rabbi Morozov, i want to tell you i just I have to say this, I shouldn't say it in front of, but Ashrechem, Kehillah's basement, not people, in Flatbush, that you have such people like Rabbi Morozov and Rabbi Moss and people of Moser. If I would be able to sit and learn at the feet of Rabbi Morozov, I would be the happiest man around. I don't, I'm in Manchester, I do my own business. All I can say is Ashrechem. I can't say more than that. Just hope you appreciate uh, you know what <laughs> let me tell you one thing Dr. Rebbe, Rebbe Rosef mentioned before his kids live connected to Tanya how does Tanya start off it starts off someone pointed out some of my own original thoughts Someone pointed out before the first chapter of Tanya is incredibly problematic when you're starting to learn especially with a not, not yet observant person, a beginner, introducing someone to Chassidus, it's so problematic. The Alter Rebbe begins with a whole pilpul, al pinigla gemara sahin, makari sahir. How do you define what is a tzaddik, what is a rasha, and what is a baby? And the obvious glaring question is why is that so seminal, so central to Chassidic thought? That is the beginning of Tanya Tereshib Exalusis. And then the Alter Rebbe goes on to explain a lengthy introduction. That Reb Chaim Vital tells us that every Jew has two nefoshes, shame, shame, nefoshes. It's that one in Nefesh Alikis and one in Nefesh Abbas. Which is a fascinating piece of inspiring information about Lamayna Kemina. If I have two Nefeshes, I have one Nefesh, and I have two Yetzah, I have two different types of Yetzahs, Yetzah Toiv, Yetzah as you learn in kindergarten school and whatever. Lamayna Kemina. And then the most difficult problem is that the Rebbe then begins to explain the difference between a Jewish neshama and a neshama of a any Yehudi. I cannot tell you how many Chabad rabbis and Chabad houses around the campus like pull the hair out. Dal the Rebbe could not stick that into chapter Nun Gimel in Daniel. After a guy spent five years learning, you could already introduce him to the concept of what it means a neshama is just all. The uniqueness of a Jewish of a Jewish person, Mashenki, the Shamas of Akum, of the Gilulim, etc. Why Dalta in the beginning? It's such a turn off. And not only is it a problem to all Chabad rabbis and all Chabad houses, the Alter Rebbe himself suffered. When the Alter Rebbe was in prison, they interrogated him very harshly. 20 questions he answered orally. One question about Malchus he answered the lengthy trees, Biksav. And the 22nd question is they asked the Alter Rebbe about. What Dalte Rebbe writes about Goyev. And Dalte Rebbe just smiled. Because generally, Schuyk is Mamtik Din and whatever. Basically, but telling them a subliminal message. Listen, I've answered all 21 previous questions to your satisfaction. You agreed. I could answer you and prove to you how the Goyev come from Gimel Klippas at the Mesh Legam, Rishi Vem Tevklal, and Kol Ma David Legamayo. We could talk about it. Do you really want to start this conversation? So therefore, the Alter Rebbe just smiled, and they picked up the message, and they didn't pursue the subject. But I ask you, if you were writing the Tanya Rachman right, and you need an editor, right, would you not say, could we not just, Rabbi, put this like a bit later, like it's a bit of a provocative, debatable, right, subject? Could we not, why, why is this message in the beginning of Tanya? To understand this, let me tell you a story. And again, I, I don't want to be provocative. But it's a story from the present Munkach Rebbe, who was a young bocher, and was, I could say the name of the yeshiva, but he learned in the yeshiva in the Midwest called Tells. Munkach Rebbe was an eyes in a cup. He was learning, and one of the Rosh Hashivas, I'm not going to mention his name, but who, 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 we're not mentioning names, no, there's many Rosh Hashivas in Tells. One of the Rosh Hashivas was giving a Musash Mus, starting, starting a Seder cycle of learning Musil Shishor from Rosh Hashem 
Anyone who learned like course 101 in Musr knows like the most powerful words in Musr is the beginning of Rishachayim Sati starts off Yisoyed, I used to say, and the Musr they can say it with a kach, with a nigan, with a bread, that every soul with a spinalus of your soul's lantern. Yisoyed, I used to say, and he said it over and over and over. And Punkti Sor, the future Munkachar Rebbe walking there, and he wanted to have a bit of a chapel. You know, Good hearted, they were very close actually, right? very close actually, right? And he says, after such powerful words, what possibly could Chassidus add to that statement? That's the most powerful statement in Jewish literature. Munkar Tereba was not a mapple kid, even as a young boy, right? And he answered, me neyu beg, without, without batting an eyelash. If a Chassid was writing that, there were two minor changes he would make, which you see is not so minor. First, he wouldn't say, ma chuyvo soi ba'ilomai, ma schusi. It's not a chuyv, it's not an onus, a burden to be in the world. It's a schus, you're a shtech of the Abish to your maybe. And I'm pale the mama. Why is it a schuyv? It's a schus. And even more important, you wouldn't say machuivoi boi lomoi. You'd say maschusai boi lomoi shalakadish barachu. The velt is not your velt, it's the Abish to his velt. He's the angel. And I must tell you, when you go on to learn the first introductory chapter of Basil Susharim, what is the purpose of Tachlis Habriya? Right? Because the Abish just have a table hative and he can't keep it Namat Tachsuf, and as everywhere, every school child knows. Right? How many times have I, have I studied with Balichuve or people, and then I come and they say, I'll tell you a story. There was a rabbi called Chaim Gutnik, a blessed memory. I knew very well in Melbourne, Australia. He came to New York, and then he had a meeting with Rabbonim in the Midwest. Pult. And he was meeting one of the Rabbana, or a Shiva, a person, who was a chaver of his from Tel Shebet Tel's in Lithuania, which actually still stands, the red brick building in Tel's. I was there. And I was there. The only Yid who lived in Tel's today was a Yid who was born in Liadi, which is interesting. You show in Tel's there actually was a Shir in Tanya every week. Anyone who ever learned Shir Adas, you know. There's a lot of Chabad Rayanis in there. There's a Shir in, in Shiva in Tel's for Obach in Tanya, once a week. Anyway, so the Rebbe inquired from Rabbi Gifter, the Rebbe inquired from Rabbi Gutnik from Australia, going to the Midwest, find out what plenty and plenty has against Chabad. What's at the time? Is the, uh, so he came back and told the Rebbe two things. I spoke to him from the Chaveyim. He didn't. He also made two problems. Number one, the Lubavitcher Rebbe found a favorf in the Medrash in the middle of nowhere. No one ever heard of it before. A medrash tanchum in Parshas Nosi, which says the whole tachlus of Briyas Oilam is this avak of the Shboruch who leads the Shboruch dir betachtoinim. And of them, he built the whole philosophy of Chassidus. Every mimer is built on that. The second problem is, is all the Gedolei Yisrael get together. There's some etzkes and then they sit and they they wrestle and they ra- they gra- grapple with all the the issues of Oilam al and the Babaji Rebbe sits in his room in 770 Eastern Park when he's machlid al tasatzmi. The Rebbe heard both tainas and he smiled from ear to ear. And he said, If you have a different tachlis in Bria Sa'ilum, if for you Bria Sa'ilum is what? Because the Abrishter has to give me a shtikl of Yosin, Sharabor, and Yayan Amishum. Nor Heichet Timzu. Therefore, I have to go through this union, I have to have the whatever. But the Iker Tachlis is because the Abish don't want to give me reward. So you have one approach to life, one approach to Terry Mitzvahs, one approach, one whole different approach when you open the Sefer and whatever. If you believe that the whole purpose of Briya Sa'ilam is this Ave, Fatayvis, and the Kashis, the Iker is the Abish to want to deal with Tachtoyne. Which is not, by the way, the Rebbe's Chiddush. That was. Expanded it, but it comes from Tanya Perik Lavet Vov, and it comes in all the works of the Rebbe Shabbos, etc., etc. Which, by the way, Derek Agav, if you're a big Amoritz and you only learned the first chapter of Mrs. Sharon, you would think that's the be all and end all. But when you start learning Das Tunis and Kalach Pesachach and all the other works of the Ramchal, you see that it's much, much deeper. Even the, the Litvisher Bali Musser today, Rechaim Friedlander, and Zahoris, and the works of the Ramchal also admits to it. They also agree. And Kamakhev is not a time for a, for a pilpul. But if you're super, what should I say? If you're, there's certain things that sound very, very deep and profound to people who are very, very superficial. So if you just learn everything superficial and you have a very limited understanding of what is the tachlus briya so'ilam, 
It's posh different. Asher Alkim. Let me try to explain this, what I'm talking about. Not too long ago, we prepared ourselves for Yom Neroi. How do you explain? This answers numerous questions, but I have no time to, to be my own. What is the Mishpat on Rosh Hashanah? What are you being judged for? Pashat Ezra. The Abishur is not there to punish you to whatever. Rosh Hashanah, as Chesidus explains, the Binyan Hamalus. Where do you come in the picture? Where is your private individual Mishpat? Bezin Shalmaila, whatever, the Abishur is Kiveya on Rosh Hashanah. Are you an asset to Malchus Hamayim or are you a liability? Very simple. Are you in the, your life? Are you in the black or are you in the red? Are you producing debits or are you producing your day helping Malchus Hamayim to prosper in this world? The Emerson Mishpa will happen after 120 years when you're six, when you put your six feet under, you kick it up the daisies, and your Neshama goes to Bezen Shalmaila, then you'll be from Mishpat. Rosh Hashanah, the Iker is about Malchus Shemayim. Shaila is, where do you fit in the grand scheme of contributing to Malchus Shemayim and being a negative, destructive force in the face of this earth? Do we need you here or not? So basically, you know, this is not, you know, all Sforum say, this is of all types, right? The Mishpat and Rosh Hashanah is basically a practical, pragmatic, utilitarian question of how are you... What are you doing for Malchus Shemayim in this world? If you're an asset, we'll keep you on. If not, we'll fire you. That's Rosh Hashanah. It's a practical question. Lomar Zogan, on practical levels, you go to an exam, you have a university, you go to an exam. If you make 90% on your exam, I would imagine most people will be, it's an A student, you're, you're doing well. But there are those areas in life where 90% or 95% is definitely not enough. 95% is a churvin. Because not everything in life is judged in practical, corporeal, utilitarian from a perspective. Lemashal. Very good example is relationships, interpersonal relationships. Lemur Zogan, you have a child. The love of a father or mother to a child, is that a logical, rational relationship? If a father has something to save, let's say you're a, you're a shiva, you're a shpia, and you have a Talmud who's like, he's both us eincha, you love him with every soul, you have a sprach with him, he learns from you, and you have a son who's a bit up. And you have one visa to get out of Germany, it's 1935. Who are you going to save, your Talmud or your child? This was a question actually was asked in communist China. There's a natural earthquake. You could save a nuclear prize winning biologist who could, whose contributions to the world is incredible. You could save the prime minister of China who governs two billion people. Or you could save, save your own child. And the answer you were supposed to say was the head of the Communist Party, right? But you're totally farik, you're out of your cotton picking mind. If you choose anybody other than your child, I, your child is a typical accountant living in Flatbush, is not going to contribute anything to the greater good of the world. But if you're not going to save your child, Epis, Epis felt it. When a mother in her Yisrael jumps into a burning bush, a burning bus to save her child after a pigua, this is not logical, this is not rational, but the love of a mother is something that's higher than rationality. It's super rational. And therefore, 95% is not the, the mark we're looking for on such a test. It's not rational, it's not logical, it's not pragmatic, it's not utilitarian. Let me take a husband and wife relationship. Is pshat is that the, the devotion of a husband and wife and vice versa is because they serve a purpose to me? My husband is a good provider, my wife is a good housekeeper, my wife is a good whatever, a mechaneches for my children. So on a practical levers, level, to to be devoted, to be dedicated to her, because it makes sense. So it's really self-serving. I remember the first year I went to my shul, there was a sweet little old lady, wasn't the firmest of ladies, but she taught me a lot about life. She had a husband who was an old age home, and he had dementia, and never, he, she, she, the man didn't recognize his wife. And every day she would cook up a pot of chicken soup, put it in a flask, and she would walk. I saw him 
my eyes every day in the cold, in the sleet, in the rain, in the heat, to spoon feed her husband, spoon by spoon, who didn't know who the lady was. The love of this woman toward the husband was based on what's, he, what's in it for me? What am I gonna get from this relationship? He doesn't know who you are. But that's the nature of love. It transcends everything. Therefore, in such a relationship, if a husband shows his fidelity, his loyalty, his dependent, dependability to his wife, 98% of it, 99% of the time, a mole he strays. Hello? If I was the Dayan in that court of Gitten, it's like, 99% of, of, of time being loyal and having fidelity to your wife is certainly not good enough. It's good enough on an exam. It's good enough in a business relationship. It's not good on an intimate personal relationship. Now, Shtelzer to Shiloh, what kind of relationship do you have to the Rabbi Nishan? You could have a relationship where I do more good things, more mitzvahs than Averis, right? So at the end of the day, I'm a, I'm a brain surgeon. I figured I'm a tzaddik virale. I'm a tzaddik virale. I'm, 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 I'm so crazy. Whatever. A tzaddik, and I'm right. In beginners halacha, a mishpat of Rosh Hashanah, I'm a tzaddik virale. But when it dealt the Rebbe in introducing these five new classifications of tzaddik virale, tzaddik virale, is opening up a whole new agenda in Yiddish guys. This is not a utilitarian relationship. You scratch my back, I'll scratch your back. If I do mitzvahs, the Amish will pay me back with a nice little uh, Leviathan. My pshat, now the new pshat I'm having an intimate, personal, one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Rabbi Nishan. And now there's a different, it's not based on practicality. It's based on something totally different. It's a totally different thing is demanded from it. And here Chassidus explains that this relationship and this love, this connection, this relation to the Rebbein Shalom has to be chuyder, not only your nefesh is, which has a beteva to has to penetrate and permeate and subliminate and elevate your nefesh abamis, your whole being. Then you become an oived Hashem rather than an oived someone who's work, worshiping themselves. And for that, you need to be mavatl yourself. As Alter Rebbe says in Tanya, Perik Vov, the Shechina only shines upon a person who's bottled to the Abish. And that's a difference. Someone once pointed out, I can't remember whom, my Rosal told me, Tanya starts off with the letter Taf, Tanya. And Tefer Shalbeinim ends with the letter Bemokim Acher with an Aleph. And the funny thing is, before you learn Tanya, you're waking your way up, and you're starting from Aleph, and you work your way up to Taf. But see this when you start learning, you think you're tough, you're already at the end. I'm ready, I'm learning. Right? At the end, when you finish Sefer Shalbeinanim, you realize you're back to the Aleph. But you, the truth is, you're also back to the Aleph, because the Aleph is the Alufish Oil. The Aleph is the Abish. You have a totally different Mahalik, a different relationship to the Abish. And without that, if you don't know where you're going or what's a pachlis of your bria, of the bria, that's why Rebchaim Vital says a person without Pneumia Satayru, without, in our days without Siddhis, is Kibahemis, like walking like an animal in the world. His, his, his whole, his, he's, he's, a, he's a, like Mamish, a blind kachka. He, the the, the Shalom Kodesh says you can't be Toyim Tam Yerushimayim without Siddhis, right? And that's the Koyach of. Which is Gimatria, Likute Amorim Tanya. You start learning this, right? You realize it's Likute Amorim, Niloshim Adan Tolaktu. We're living in such incredibly difficult times. Where it says in Sforim, in Mitzrayim, the Eden fell down on the 49th level of depravity. One more level, they would have reached the Chamishim, the, the Nunchari Tumah, which is the point of no return. And the morale and the Kodesh Magan, so you can say before Mashiach comes, world will fall into the f you know why by the way you know who we are let me tell you a secret i spoke about a munipshuta before do you know when the door when the when the ear and the migdal when did they build the door of Flogo? when did they build the tower of babel what year after creation anybody anyone out there anyone learned chumash here like a parachitas i don't know 
The Tower of Babel was built in the year of 1996 after Briozoil. Everyone knows, every school child is told, the great Machlikas in the two Iker days. here. At what stage in his life did Avram begin to be Makir is buried to recognize as a creator to the world? One opinion is three. There were eight of Avram, Avram, One opinion was 48. Avram, we know, was born in the year 1948 after Briya's oil. So, how old was Avram by, middle, by the, the middle bubble, by the Dora Flogger? 48. You know why it says in Svarim, and this is not, you know, but it's brought down all the Svarim in Al in Maral, in Shaloa Kodesh, all classical Mephorosh. Why did they, they build the Dara Flog punk at that moment? Because Avram at age three came to our choral, logically, rationally, Seicheldik. He took a course at the university, a rabbi doctor, professor, came to the conclusion there must be Yesh Balabayas Libirizu. And that's why the Torah is silent about the early years of Avram, as the rabbi explained, because we're not, we, we're not to be rabbi doctors. They said that since rabbis became doctors, Judaism became sick. We're supposed to be mamin with him and When did Avram become a mamin b'amunatimimah, b'amunatahir, b'amunatahir, When he was 48. And since there always has to be a counterbalance, zela umaza in the world, when Avram became a true mamin at age 48, in the year 1996 after Bigas Oilam, that's when they made the big Bavel, which is the umaza. We have a city called Yerushalayim, Yerushalayim. They had a place of Bovel. Of Shinar, Shramnir, a place of Tumor. We have a Migdal, Kemigdal, Dovitz, Avorech, Baril, Telpias. They have a Migdal of, of Lumaza. You know who we are, our Nishamas? It says in Sforim, it's not my own words. It's Rechaim Vital says it. No one, no one in this generation could say such a word. Let me tell you a story. Well, think. There was a great Makubal in Yerushalayim called Shalom Lezer Margolis. And he heard, he heard from his Rebbe in Kabbalah, the Baron of Arov, who heard from his Zayd of Lezer Jikover, who heard, was once going, Lezer Jikover was going to the Tish of the Holy Chayzer together with his father, the Holy Zerah Kodesh, the Raftali of Tuyav Ropshitz. And suddenly, in the middle of Shulchan Hator, the Ropshitzer fell into a trance, and you could see he's making Aliyah San Hashama. And he's taking the express elevator somewhere, like, really, wow. And suddenly the Rapshitzer whispers to his son, Lazarel, Hezzigit, listen carefully. The Rebbe is about to wake up from his extra curse. I don't know explain. His like out of outer body experience, right? And he's gonna come down with an important message. Listen carefully. And Taka the as the Rapshitz tells of Lazarel. The Chayza opens his eyes and he said, B'shaitoi, the holy Baal Shem Tev once had a Azaliyas HaNeshama. Again, his Neshama ascended. And he went up to some cosmic sphere and he saw the angels, the Malachi Asharas, who were building this incredibly humongous, huge skillet, this frying pan, which is huge. And he asked the angel, what's this, like, what's happened here? And they picked him up higher and he could see they were frying in the skillet hands and feet and it was it was it was terrible it was awesome and he asked him my high what's going on here and they explained him in my law that before mashiach comes there'll be a tkufa where the neshamis of the derhamabul and the derhaflogo will be this galgu will come down into the world and kiyudua from other places those say, and that's that's why the iker nisyenis of our generation the last generation of Gullus, first generation of Gullu, is the Kihishkis Kalbosur as Darkel or it's in Yanam of Arayas of Kedusha. And the lack of Emun, which is the Migdal, the Daraflog, building, using science, technology. Everyone knows the famous debate of Napchitz, using your mind, your rationality, technology to rebel against Malchushamai. A UDI, a unilateral declaration of independence against the Apish. And therefore, the neshamas of the Shishim Rebbe that were in, 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 in Mitzrayim were Gilgulim of those two deiris, which is the reason they were punished. That called Benayiloid Hayaira Tashlichu, and they had to build or a miskinus lepari connected to Raflog. And from Mitzrayim, but Uisus and Moivsim with Tanmakis, the Eibushot took us out, 
and we went 49 days later, we were standing with infinite love at Har Sinai. And if we wouldn't have messed up, then Moshe Rabbeinu would have been Mashiach and he would have brought us straight from Har Sinai to Yushalayim and he would have built the base of Hira and it would have built a Binyan Yitzchi. And says Reb Chaim Vital, and the Rebbe Marash brings this in my morning, and the Rebbe quotes it from the Rebbe Marash. That's the reason that before Mashiach comes, women demand equal rights. Because last time around, the men listened to the women, men didn't listen to their women, who refused to give their jewelry to the Chet Eagle. And the Neshama subliminally knows it, and therefore this time around, it demands that the husbands listen to the wives, not forget. And therefore the Nisiyonis of this generation are so terribly awesome. And the only way to be misgaber on this Choshech, there's one Eitzah. And that's the eight that the Abishter gave us the key from starting from the Baal Shem Tov, to bring down this Kedusha, this Yerushamayim into the world. Kiyadua says in Sforim that Yisrael Baal Shem Tov is Gimatri a thousand. There's a thousand and a thousand and one, which all the Sforim are full of, right? Rav Shirin Bayachai Lakol, which is Gimatri a Sherish Anella, which is Gimatri a Baruch Hashem Mogen Avram, which is Gimatri a Kedush Yisrael Hashem, which is gematria, whatever, hundred, baton of the genozai, numerous, this idea of echad, echad, one is echad, the lowest letter in the alphabet, and a thousand is elif, echad amarba, echad amamit, the idea of Yerushalayim. Tzemach Tzedek said that the Magid of Mezrich, Dalteleb Zrebbe, could bring Yerushalayim into a, into a Tinek Ben Yemi, a one day old child. The Valshemte was able to bring Yerushalayim into a doimen, into an inanimate stone. Kiyudua, the Rebbe of Zusha of Anapolo, once asked Al Rebbe, who had a Kabbalah through the Malach to the Magid, he had things that none of the, none of the, oh, yeah, none of the other Talmudi HaMagid knew about. So the Rebbe of Zusha asked Al Rebbe, could he tell him anything about the Madriga of Yerushalayim of the Baal Shem Tov? And Al Rebbe told Rebbe Zusha that he heard from the Magid that the Magid once wanted to spear, he wanted to feel the Yerushalayim of the Baal Shem Tov. And Shemayim took their time. One day, Kiyudua, the, the Magid, was lame on his left foot. And one day he was on his couch, like on his bed, and he started to quake, to quiver, to shake. He was shaking, the bed was shaking, even the Nagelwasser next to the bed was shaking, and he just couldn't take it, he just couldn't bear it. And he asked Shemayim to take it away, which they promptly did. And then they were Megalim in Shemayim, but that was the year Shemayim of the Baal Shem Tev. not during the Ilo, when he used to smoke his pipe, that was the Madriga of the Baal Shem Tov. That's what is the purpose of Chesed, is to bring you to Shemayim and people like us who are the Chinas Doimim. The Ktsos Achoshin, the author of the Ktsos Achoshin, Kiyudua, was again, whatever. He was not a Chosid, right? And he once met the Zidat Shoiv, the terrorist Svi. And he asked him, you know, there's been the Kubolim in Chal Yisrael ever since, whatever, ever since Rashbi, ever since Moshe got to Tehran Asina. What is Chassidus special? Is a special group? What's happened here? So the Atara Svi was a big Chassidus. He answered beautifully. He said, Moshe Mahadover Doima, you have a, an emperor, an empire, where the king, the emperor, passed away with no Yorship. There's no one to succeed him. So they make a search committee to choose a candidate to be Sheikh Mullah someone who could be a leader of people, who could inspire people, has all the necessary qualities of leadership. And different people and different groups and different lobby for their particular candidates. The Pikich Shebedover, what does he do? He doesn't write a paper describing the caliber, the character, the personality, the charm of his, of his candidates. He brings them there in person to the people on the board. When they actually see him, then their their is awesome, and that's the one they take. That story in that little marshal of the Zidjaver captures the essence. There was once a Talmud of the Khusaif. It's called Naftali Hertz Klatsky. His son was Elia Klatsky, the Rava Lublin, Mishlain. A family of geniuses. And when he was learning in Pressburg by the Holy Khusaifer, he suddenly, I don't know how, he got hold of a a page, a mimer, see this, and he went out of his box, he pushed it like, wow. <coughs> he, was, he was a deep spiritual person. Wow. He's going to journey from Pressburg, which was in Slovakia, mm -hmm. to Shalayim of Hungary in those days, to all the way to Lubavitch, which in those days is Mahalach Tov So he's journeying, 
And no one could his relative thought he's Farik, he's out of his mind. What's, what's with the guy? He journeyed to the Semach Tzedek in Lubavitch. When he arrived in Lubavitch, the Semach Tzedek was a certain Kufa, he found it very difficult to say my morning. He was not well, because of his big ashmas. So he went into Yechidus. He said, I've never, I've journeyed all this way from Presburg to Lubavitch. In those days, news didn't travel, people didn't know from one. Today, you know, you sit in Flatbush, you know, every Lushnar and every Mikvin, they brock and, and Colt, the whole world. In those days, it was uh, different worlds. I've come and schlepped and serious nefesh to Lubavitch. I'm not hearing a mimer. So the Semach said, I said, I'll arrange with you a chavrusa, with a and Tanya, with a chash of a chos. So he's a pig, because it's a rabbi cliche in the Mavash. It's a cliche, it's not a. So the Semach said, I said, You're right. Abra is Yatsi led this way. And he arranged him a chavrusa with a pill paracher. And they learned the beginning of Tanya, which deals with Tzaddik and a Rosh and a Bain and Ender. And Rabbi Hill Parcher touched in his Oysius. He explained, a Tzaddik is Bilti Balgvu, someone who transcends limitations. A Bain and an El Chid, Upkeep, but it's Kavul, the limited boundaries, there's limitations. So in the Philly Hertz class, if a Rebbe is Bilti Balgvu, what in the world possibly could be a Rebbe? If a tzaddik is built in, what's higher than built in Balgvul? So the Rebbe Parish just said, a Rebbe is built in Balgvul in Gvul. It's a very deep word. To be able to take, Mokima or Nehemiah, to take something which is infinite, which is transcendent, and to bring it into Gvul, into boundaries, limitations, into this world, the Omar Vishasan we told you before, that's something which is awesome. That's where Bill Parisher types elsewhere. The Mekubolim Harishonim, the early Mekubolim, they dealt with Mamalikolal, that level of godly energy and light, which permeates, which is a more limited type of light, which like, like every Aver has its unique tailor-made chayas for that Aver. Darizal deals with Soiviv Kolal, that which transcends, not geographically, but spiritually, that which is transcendent, that which is not limited, not so finite. The Balshemtiv, that's Bechinas Atik, which is Atu Hashem Levadecha. It transcends characteristic classification of Mamalis. So it's above, it just transcends all limitations. And that's why people have to wonder, what, what always hits me personally is that the Maizik Yutus Kislev, Rimnis Nemenov, great Mashpiam in Paris, he once said, actually, he's a. He was very friendly with Rebitzigl in Paris Royal. And Rebitzigl told him, listen, if you would be a Polish, you would be in Paris when I'm in Amtor. This was a very special Jew. Rebitzigl heard from Rebbe Cheskel Fagin, heard from the Friedrich Rebbe, that when they brought the Agol HaShchir, the, the wagon with Alter Rebbe, which was only for the highest criminals, like life and death things, they brought him past the city called Stardew. And there was a chassidish idea called Rabbi Cheskel. Everyone, when they saw the Alter gone to the Fashis, communication with Lidna was happening. So the chassidim fasted every day. The, the city, was, everyone took it very much to heart. The last night of the 53 days the Alter Rebbe was arrested, they all had a dream. To know that's true, everyone in the community of chassidim in Stardom had the same dream. And in the dream, Yitzhak Kislev is the Yemi Lula of the Holy Magid. And when a tzaddik has a yard site, all the other tzaddikim gather to his Hegel in Gan Eden, he pravas. And the Magid started saying to her, and then he started crying. And he said, my Talmud, Reb Zalman, is in Skona, right? And he demanded that he establish a Bezin, and they established the Bezin of Shurim by Yechoi, and the Arizal, and the Baal These were the three Tayonim in the Bezin. And they passed in the Alter Rebbe for Freitag. That was Yutis Kislev. They couldn't do anything about it. They still fasted the next day. Because they had no, but everyone fasted. It was already a fast Peter Simcha. And later, the Serb Yitzhak passed away. And his savo was that when he dies, when the, when the, when the Besura Teva comes to the Shikhar Alter Rebbe, they should go to his grave and take a, a flash mashka and pour the mashka on his head and dance. It's like, he gave up his life for the Rebbe. That's, like, that's what all he wanted, Lord. But the moral of the story is, you see the, the, the Hemshech, the Shalshelis, Rashir Vayachoy, the Zoyer, Arizal, Balshemtiv, Al-Derebbe, it's all one continuation. 
And therefore, what Al Rebbe is saying, it's not good enough to have a soup. Halavai, we should be baining him. But the she'ifa of a person, there's a difference in life. This is very, very important. Practically, we're all frail. We're all imperfect. The only people I always say who I know that are perfect are the husbands of old, of old maids. Think about it. They were always perfect. Normal people, Amnoshim Kerkenu, a sin is to the soul, what the common cold is to the body. We all, Mizman Luzman, we, we fall. And we, Baruch Hashem, the beauty of Yiddishkeit is you fall, you don't ask for an encore, you don't you just brush yourself off and get weiter. You don't sit parks in the, in the blood, in the mud. But your she'ifes have to be whole. Your, your desires, where you want to be. I may not be a Bainini, I may be a Konitatanya, Russia, the Toivli, right? But where do I want to be? I know there's a Nefesh kiss within me, a Nefesh Abamis, but I know that even my Nefesh Abamis comes from Klippas Neuge. It's not, it's something that I could elevate and I could refine and I could work on, and that's what I have to feel. In other words, see this is Pashat Emunah, faith in the Rabbi Nishalom, faith not only in the, faith in me. One of my Mechutonim tells me when he was a Bachar, he was a very, very close to Rabbi Shleim Zalman Oyerbach, Zechotzadik Levroch. And he once escorted Rabbi Shleim Zalman Oyerbach to the Kuisl. It was after the Six Day War, and there was a Dukhan Chabad that put on film with people he'd. I must tell you that Chaim Shulevitz, hello, who has outstanding Musa credentials, Zayda was Rabbi Yezel, da, 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 Right? When he saw the Chabad Duchen, he just stood there for an hour. You know an hour? Or Shiva, he, he, kol, kol is cool as Murak Pagusi. Time is of essence. He just stood there for an hour outside, more than an hour, outside the Chabad uh, thing where they put on tefillin, and he cried. He cried watching Jews roll up their arm one after the other in the queue, putting on tefillin. Mikam Chayisro. Rup Shleim Zalman was going with my Mechutin, and he, he, stood, he studied, he sat there, he stood there and watched. And Rav Shleim Zalman said, everyone says that the Lubavitcher Rebbe is the Godel Hamamin in Bidurin. He's like that. He's, he's like, the Rebbe is renowned in, in Amuna. The, actually, let me tell you a story, by the way, just while I'm talking. Just reminds me. Years and years ago, there was a professor from Princeton University in 19, early 1950s who came to 770, asked for an appointment, Yechidus, Fine. Only a few inside people knew that he had a kavan in coming. He wasn't there to ask the Rebbe advice. He was a fellow who was writing a book, a study. He was a great psychologist. He was a Talmud Muvik of Sigmund Freud. And he was writing a book about great intellectual academics, thinkers, people on Yeshich Malayla, head and shoulders above the average person. And he wanted to know what makes them tick. What's their strong points, their weak points? Cut a long story short. He heard this new Rebbe in New York, like he's a brilliant, he's a genius, he's like off the charts, he's like whatever, and he knows so many secular subjects, let me check him out. So he went in, and he thought he's going to psychoanalyze the Rebbe, he's like, look, he knows how to do it, you know? He goes to psychoanalyze the Rebbe, the Rebbe had an incredible genius in turning tables around people. Instead, he asked him, what's your shita in psychology? And he gave him this intricate shita with all these like multisyllabic words that, you know, cost. the Rebbe slugged up his whole theory, and the guy, homum, he came out. When he walked out, the few people who knew the inside story is trying to analyze the Rebbe, and no one knew the Rebbe. The Rebbe was in this all the years. And they wonder, what? Like, what the hell? Spill the, like, spill the beans. What do you say about a Rebbe? Is he, you know? So the psychiatrist said, listen, he, out of his mind, he's, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a psychiatrist. I teach psychiatry. I know nothing about physics. But Albert Einstein, and we teach together at Princeton, we're colleagues. I know nothing about physics, and he knows nothing about psychiatry. However, we get on personally, socially. Here's a rabbi, he's supposed to know about Judaism, right? He knows more psychology. He, he, was, he was shocked at the brilliance and the depth and profundity of the Rebbe's Mahalach in psychiatry. He just couldn't believe it. He says he's seen many, many great people of all different faiths and no faiths, et cetera, et cetera. He's, and every person has their Mishigas, their idiosyncrasies. My Mishigas used to say, all of us are Mishigoyim. Who do we label a Mishigas? Someone lets everyone know that they're Mishigas. If you keep all your Mishigas to yourself, you consider it to be normal. He says he's never ever seen a person who's so wholesome and normal as this Lubavitcher. Of all the time I spent with him, there's only one chesaron I could find. Everyone gasp, hold their breath. He says, when it comes to faith, he has the faith of a five-year-old child. When the chesidim heard that, all the haskol, when it comes to a it's a five-year-old child. 
Nachzal yinei nusar b'shleim. As Alman said, everyone knows the Rebbe is gadol hamamina, but everyone thinks the Rebbe is the gadol hamamina in the Eibishter. And now I've seen the Rebbe is the gadol hamamina in every other yid. But why is the Rebbe the gadol hamamina in the potential of every single Jew? Because he's the gadol hamamina in the Eibishter, and he knows that every Jew has a nefesh kiss, and every Jew therefore has infinite potential. You hear what I'm saying? It's a totally different mahalach. See, this opens up. I, I, I don't come from a larger background. I went, I used to call me Yisri Shavakal Vaidazar Shavailam. I went everywhere in the world looking, hak and clapping. There is nothing as deep and profound. There was actually, there was a great mashkiach in, in Roshiva, Gana Goinam, a Kodjelian. His name was Rib Shimon Zelachover. My Machut and Russell Weinberg, he told me, he learned by him, like, eh. he was in Yachal, he was in, 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 in Advalts, in Gary's Yeshivas, in Sakhar, whatever. A holy man. You read his farm, like Yvamish, Sheikh Mullah He was a Boki Nifla in Tanya, and he encouraged all Bachram of all stripes, types, whatever, it doesn't matter what you wear, what, to learn. So it's the Bachram tried to test him out. They fired him in Tanya, and they fired him, like, you know, he knew everything. Someone asked him, where does it say in Tanya Va'al Yehi Shaitan? You shouldn't be a fool. Do thou shalt not be a fool. So Shimon Lelachav laughed. Says, that line is, every, that word, those words, Al Yehi Shaitan, is every line in Tanya. Except where does Al Tanya say, Befeir Shepher Chavchas. But the whole Tanya is built, don't be a Shaitan, be a Pichach, and open up your eyes and see a different reality. Therefore, Tanya is geboit on, see this generally, is geboit on bittel. Forgetting about yourself. What we said before about, it's not chuyvas odom, it's not ba'ilomoy. You're here temporarily in the Abish's world, fulfilled his tachlis. And the bittel, or be'el always kachslachen, the bittel also has to be with a bittel. Behema, everyone knows behema, scramble letters, you get bo ma. In the behema, there's ma, ma is vanach ma, bittel. Interesting, Odom is also 45, Gimatria Ma. Difference is in a Bahama, you see the Bittel. In an Odom, it has to be Bahavlo, you don't see it without Blitz, without externalities. We started talking about, started talking about Chitzonius. The Iker of Pneumius is that a person rearranges his perspective, his eyes open to understand what Chitzonius is and what, therefore, what the Abishter is, what he is, and what is his schus to serve the Abishter in the Abishter's Olam, right? And if you don't have that intimate relationship, if you have a business relationship, a barter relationship, but you don't have a personal, loving, caring relationship with the Rabbi Shalom, you've missed the plot. You're in the wrong direction. You're sending your Torah mitzvahs in the wrong place. Let me leave you, Dervayla, with one story. It's a personal story. A very painful story, actually. A few years ago, I had a niece lived in Los Angeles, my, my brother-in-law's uh, daughter. She was a young girl, and she got Nebuchadnezzar, a terrible form of juvenile uh, leukemia. And they went through chemo, et cetera, et cetera, and Baruch Hashem, she was in remission. And then it came back with a vengeance. And we all went, the family knew about it, we all went to the her younger brother having a bar mitzvah. The next day I traveled back with her to New York, and I was with her, the Rebbe's room. Davening there, whatever. And the Sikuyim the, was not good. It was like, you know, whatever. Anyway, eventually, a few months later, she passed away from this world. She was aged 10, almost 11. An interesting one story I want to bring out to you is her point. Bef, bef, when, it, when it came back and she had to leave school and she had to go through harsh treatments, she has her her, unc her, her grandfather is Roshiva in, in Chabad in, um, in Los Angeles, and she has a large family there. One of her cousins on the other side, the other side of the Mishpacha, is happens to be the chaplain to the Los Angeles Police Department. So one day he calls her up, he wants to lift her up, lift her spirits. He calls her up and he says, Chayam Mushka, I have, I have a surprise for you. I'm coming around. In 10 minutes with my car, we're going for a spin, we're going for a ride. And she wasn't allowed to have too much contact. Fine, great, she's really happy. He takes her by his car to the LAPD helipad, where the helicopters, you know. And he says, Chaimushka, what would you like to see? 
There's a beautiful aerial view. You can see panoramic view of Los Angeles, which is a gewaltige city. Beauty. It's like totally superficial. I'd say the difference, what's the difference between yogurt and California is that California does because yogurt has real culture. The most superficial external city in the world, right? Someone said Hollywood is a place where they shoot too many films and too few actors, right? It's like a mamish. The Walt Winchell once said, uh, you could take all the sincerity in Hollywood and fit it into the navel of a fruit fly and still have enough room left for three caraway seeds and a producer's heart. It's a, it's a city of whatever. But superficially, externally, it's a beautiful city. So they asked the Chayamushka, what would you like to see? You could go over Disney World, you go over the beach, you go over this, you go over that, all these incredible sights by helicopter. She thought about five seconds and she said, I would like to go over my school. Her school. She was missing classes for the last whatever. She feels whatever. She had to go over her school. Her cousin, the rabbi, was so nispal that of all the places to see was the school. He whipped out his mobile and he called up the principal. I want to, see, I want to show you what a school can make a difference in a child's life. And of all the places in Los Angeles, she wants to fly over by helicopter over the school. The principal of the school was so nispal. She stopped all the classes immediately. And all the girls in the school assembled to the roof of the school. And all the girls formed the heart. The heart. And the rabbi, the chaplain, said later that as long as I'm alive, I'll never forget her beaming smile from ear to ear. Went to all. And I'll never forget the guy who was the, the driver of the, the pilot of the helicopter. He was crying his eyes out. And he was so dispelled that a few weeks later at Levaya, the Levaya went from Los Angeles to Arizona, he flew the helicopter over the Levaya as a mark of respect, and he came to the shit house. And eventually he told, he saw what the people were telling stories of a, a little girl of 10 years old and the chesed that she gave, and how she filled lives, a whole long story in Kamakami. He said, as a charariah, that I, sometimes a person could live for 11 years in this world, but you could fill in all those 11 years, you could fill in 120 years worth of chesed and goodness and whatever. And the moral of the story, which I'm, I'm connected to, is you have a binyan, and you have teira, and you have a void, and you have milos chasodim, and tariyak mitzvahs, and all of kul mahum, it's all great. But Chassidus says the heart, the relationship to Rahman Liba boy, you know how many names, there's a, there's a chazal which says, Shalu Talmidov is Rebbe. The Talmidim ask Rebbe, Kam Mashem Moisir Shal Galish Baruch How many names does the Abishter have? And the Rebbe, Rebbe Yudah Nasi answers, How many names does the Abishter have? Rachman Alibaboy Vachacham Ein of Berushi. Hello, anyone out there? Earth calling Flatbush? What in the world does it mean? How many names does the Abishter have? The answer the Rebbe gives is Rachman Alibaboy. Says that because everyone knows, every school child knows, you take course 101, there are four basic names Shem Ab, Shem Sag, Shem Ma, and Shem Bat, which is 72, 63, uh, 52, and, and, and 45. What do you got? 232, which is Reish Lamed Beis, which is Rosh Tevis, Rachman al So in those days when they wanted to keep esoteric wisdom a bit secretly, what did they do? They spoke in hints. So he said, Rachman, how many names does the Abish have? The four Shemis, Ab, Ma, Ab, Sag, Ma, Ban, right? So he said, Rachman, Liba, boy. But how am I going to, you talk about Rosh Tevis? Ve'achacham, Eina, Ve'roshri. The wise guy looks at Rosh Tevis, which is Gimachia, Yehior, Reish Lamedes. The Iker is, as a Rosh Tevis, when a person hard to visit, whether it's learning Torah, whether it's doing mitzvah, whatever you're doing with it, the Iker is to attach yourself to the oyer, the light of Torah, the light of Siddhis Pacha, to learn, to do things with a Pnimi, is not with a Chitzoni, you're not out here to get another Shtikul Ganeiden, you're here to serve the the phrase, the Elul Shamesh Shuskaini, right? And with that, and the Abish Health and Taka, we should, all our, our, our schools and our shuls and our homes, and our homes that are built with Kedusha, with Taro, with Mesir Nefesh, right? With this. Chassidish, shame is vulgar in our homes, where we keep anything which is antithetical from. Can I be very blunt? There's a mezuzah. 
and the mezuzah has a shindalad yud on the mezuzah, right? And you make sure that anything which is antithetical to the shamer dalz of Yisrael is not there in, 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 I say this all the time, in Kfar Chabad, there was a rov, shneir the rov. And he once went to someone's house, he had a gemach, he was trying to raise some funds. He looked at the bookshelf in the house, right? And he said, in this house, you can't say hal on Rosh Chodesh. You can't say hal? He says, yeah. Because I'll say, why don't you say Hallel on Rosh Hashanah? It's also Rosh Chodesh Tishri. All right, yeah, Rosh Chodesh Tishri. The Gemara says, Efshir Sifri Achayim V'Sifri Amesim P'suchum L'fon L'vayimram Hal. You have the books of life and the book of death open in front of you, could you say Hal? So I come into this house and I look at the bookshelf and I see the Sifri Chayim and the Sifri Amesim, you can't say Hal in this house. The Abish should help us that we should all create homes that you can say Hal in. The Abish will have this Hal from our homes, from our lives. And all of us, all of our homes that are about the Chabad and are about the Midrashas should all be transported to Shalayim and Akkadish, Baham, Reim, Horim, Third Base Amigdash. L'chaim, L'chaim.